Hey everyone and welcome back to another Crimson Scales class review video, this time on the Vermeling Spirit Caller. If you stumbled onto this video by accident and you're wondering, what is Crimson Scales? Well, the Crimson Scales is a community kind of module or expansion to Gloomhaven that has a whole new campaign, added a load of classes, an extra monster, some new items, and really is a very highly produced kind of quality, like a fan-made project, really. It does require some of the physical components from the base game of Gloomhaven, so you would need that, but it is available as a free print and play, and it is available as a tabletop simulator mod as well. Just go to thecrimsonscales.com. Some of you out there might have been lucky enough to get yourself an actual physical copy of this game, which was available across two different print runs, I believe, which are now closed, but who knows, maybe they might open them again in the future. Before we get started, a big thank you to my patrons who support me over on Patreon and everybody who supports me over on Twitch, especially Mike for the legendary support, dude. That's awesome of you. Thank you so much. If you would like to catch me live, come over to twitch.tv slash quest every Monday, Wednesday and Sunday. And on Wednesdays at the moment is when I am doing the Crimson Scale streams. Okay, without further ado, let's get in to the Vermling Spirit Caller. The top bit here is all about Vermlings, and we know about Vermlings, so we won't go through this, but this is specific to the Spirit Caller. So there are those amongst the Vermlings who seek to tap into the realm of the spiritual, using their psychic powers to connect to the spirits within. These Spirit Callers use their psionic abilities to conjure, communicate, and control such spirits to do their bidding. Ooh, I'm thinking summons, chat. I'm thinking summons. Due to the frightening nature of the manifestation of these apparitions, these vermelings often find success in the battlefield and instill fear in the hearts of the most formidable of foes. Nice. All right, I will say this as well. Look at this. We'll go over to this. This is the player map. Look at this artwork. I mean, for me, I think this is the best artwork that I've seen so far. I mean, in terms of like just a profile picture of a character, it's got to be the best. I mean, I guess Ruinmore gives it a run for its money, but for me, I think I prefer this. I don't know. I, this is awesome. Looks great. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like this is really good. Um... I think vermin verminings in general always seem to look real cool. I don't know. Seems to always have a really good idea. You're about to say those are fighting words. Hey. All of the art is great quality, but in terms of like favorite art, I think this is this to me has got to be up there. Just looks really cool. These are summons 2.0. Okay, well let's get into the let's get into the map then. So 10 cards, not the largest of starting hands, but a very decent hand size for sure. Uh, that means we can probably burn some cards. And if we're a summoning character, it might be something we need to do. We'll see. Uh, so spirits. The spirit caller has a unique action type called spawn, which brings forth powerful spirits to haunt your enemies on the battlefield. Spirits are represented by spawn tokens on the map and are denoted with a spirit icon. On your spawn actions, spirits are not considered figures. You are considered an ally to the spirits, but spirits are not an ally to you or each other. Oh, that's very specific. An al you are considered an ally, but spirits are not an ally to you or each other. And they cannot be focused on or targeted by any abilities. I'm guessing that this is party-wide, so they're not... They're not an ally to us, but are they an ally to... I'm mean, interested to know if they're an ally to our party. Are they any... The reason why this is kind of important is a lot of like, you know, like mind control abilities or like buffs, for example, reference ally, right? So, a bit of an interesting one. The ally thing means you can't heal them. Basically, anything that refers to your allies won't care about your spirits. Okay. Is that just you or is that like party-wide? Because I can understand that. Like, okay, they're not... So I'm an ally to them. So like, for example, if the spirits had an ability that said like, heal one ally. Yeah, sure. I, I could be healed by that. But 
they're not an ally of me so if i had an ability that was like all allies get plus one attack that wouldn't work for them right anyone okay so they're not an ally to anyone okay so basically it just means that they can't be targeted by like ally based stuff, which is fine because I, I presume that this character probably doesn't use a lot of that but that's maybe an important thing to like think about if for example you were trying to build a party that had like loads of like buffs in some way um and maybe that's the way that this could be slightly nerfed or maybe that was like a con an active consideration because they didn't want it to spiral out of control we'll see basically spirits interact very separately yeah basically they don't exist for any ability effects except those specifically mentioned spirits cool okay makes sense um They cannot be focused on or targeted by any abilities, scenario effects, or game conditions unless stated otherwise. And they are unaffected by enemy effects such as retaliate. Well, that's good. They won't just die to retaliate, but maybe maybe they don't have health. It'll be interesting to see what they, they are. Yeah, so this is kind of like a, a complete... It's, it's like a summon, but it's not a summon because it's got its own kind of rules. So it's summon-like, but it's not a summon. Okay, interesting. Well, 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 I'm sure once we see the cards as well, this will all fall into place. But this is quite nice. It's summon adjacent. The character has a lot of these because of their rules. You can have more than summon. Oh, okay. Interesting. Spirits act in the order they were spawned immediately after your turn every round. After your turn... When spawned, spirits are placed in the nearest unoccupied hex adjacent to you. Place one damage token on a spirit at the end of each of its turns. Oh, so they're kind of limited. All right, okay. I guess that makes sense because they, they can't be targeted. So... Otherwise, obviously, they'd be OP because they would just be summons that stay around the entire time. So at least they will kind of gradually... It's kind of like... It's like their kind of like, I guess like their connection to our realm is kind of like slowly deteriorates. You know, it's like they don't have the energy to stay in our realm forever, which which is interesting because then you're going to have to play them like a, a you know, like a right kind of times. I guess it depends on how much health they have as well. So we'll have to keep that into consideration. But you know, normally like a, another summon, you could just drop it down and just be like, cool, it's down. Don't have to really worry about it anymore, and it'll kind of do its thing. Interesting. And you control their actions? What does it say that? And you control their actions. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that is actually a really crucial bit of text. After your turn, and you control their actions. I mean that's nice that means you don't that you don't have to like mess around with stupid ai and definitely a little buff there after your turn is interesting before your turn is always nice if you have things that like give poison or create an element something like that that'll be interesting so if it's spawned, though, it doesn't take a turn, right? Oh, I'm going to get myself all modeled up with the rules now. Spawning and summoning is two different things, right? Spawned enemies can? No, they can act in the turn that they came in or... Uh, right? The so spawned enemies do get to act like they don't have like summoning sickness, right? Like they do actually get to act the turn that they come on the board. Because it's after your turn, right? Yeah. They can act immediately after the turn you summon them. Yeah, right. So that's also quite important. Spawned versus summoned is important. 
Yeah. That does make them stronger as well. But then, you know, if they only have like two health, then I guess you kind of you kind of need that. We'll find out, I guess. <clears throat> okay, up to one spirit can occupy any hex, even if the hex is occupied by another figure. Oh, interesting. And they ignore traps, effects by overlay tiles and obstacles. Spirits cannot target enemies which occupy their hex. An empty hex occupied by a spirit is still considered empty, and they cannot open doors or activate pressure plates. Yeah, makes sense. So. Interesting. They're just literally ghosts. You think they're oversimplified to explain spawns in this classes? Take everything summon classes do and do the opposite, maybe. Essentially, nothing can impede them. Yeah. Hey, welcome to the quest. Are you mad? Would be good. Shield still blocks their attack, though, you think, but not retaliate. Well, it says unaffected by enemy by enemy effects. Such as retaliate. So what if, for example, they had innate, like, so what if it was something like a black imp or, you know, something that had innate disadvantage? Yeah, shield isn't an effect. Hmm. That is, that's an interesting question, though, because I don't think I've ever really, I don't think I've ever really had to classify that. Like, I can't remember any other point where we've gone like, okay, these are effects and these are like, I mean, so what, what, for example, would happen if they drew like a shield card on that turn, right? So they would gain an additional shield, like the ability card is like the, you know, the bandits 15. How does that work? Like, like effects, very specific. Just found my channel through YouTube. Thanks for the content. And guys, hey, no problem, man. Welcome to the live stream. Hope you're doing well. Glad you're enjoying the content, dude. You would ind indeed still gain disadvantage and you should wager a lot. It's not intended. So the attacker is affected by retaliate. The attack is affected by shield. I feel like that maybe needs a little bit of FAQing if it's not been FAQ'd already. But I mean, yeah, I'm I'm fine with that being the the kind of rule. But do you know what I mean? Like I don't I can't remember the last time that I've or if I've ever had to clarify that at any point. Like at any point have we ever had to draw like a distinction between that? kind of weird <clears throat> you'll take a look and talk to bg but guys it's a tad ambiguous yeah it's just like it's it's just the wording is like i don't think that there's anywhere wh which lists like these are effects these are not effects or whatever you know like I, I don't know if that's ever really been specified at some point um or it just needs to be clarified, like, what is an enemy effect? And if, and if it's, if it, it's, if it's like, so for example, you could put, like, if, if the intent is something like retaliate, you could put something like, I don't know, like, negative attack effects? Maybe, like, you could put in? I don't know. That's, that's maybe a bit of a bad sentence within itself. I don't know. But yeah, it's, it's ambiguous. <clears throat> you guarantee you haven't because you never even thought of it and you know everything. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it just doesn't seem... It just seems strange. Okay. Um, all right, well, I think that's it. Spirit Caller, right? How much health do we have? Six to start off with level one. That's pretty low. That's very low. So we are definitely not meant to be uh, tanking. This is not a tanking class. Although maybe, well, our spirits can't tank either because they're not, 
I mean, they can never be targeted. So, but, but perhaps they can give some buffs or something like that. Some sort of bonuses. I don't know. It's weird because we are considered an ally to the spirit. So, like, it goes one way. So, if the spirits have some sort of buff that says, like, oh, all allies within range two gain shield one, the spirits could buff us. But we would not be buffing the spirits. Kind of strange, but yeah. So, there, there is potential. But maybe not, it's definitely not through our health. Let's put it that way. We're not playing cards with the word shield on specifically. <laughs> I doubt. She's a squishmallow. Yeah. All right, let's get into the cards. Let's do it. Burning Pit. Our first level one. Spawn, Blazing Fire. So we got our first spawn. It's got two health. No movement, no attack, no range. If an enemy enters the hex occupied by this spirit, kill this spirit and the enemy suffers three damage. If fire is strong or waning, four damage instead. One XP. That's kind of cool. If an enemy enters the hex occupied... This guy doesn't move, does he? So, yeah. There's no way to move this guy. He's just going to sit there. He's got two health. So it would go over like two rounds. So I guess we need to like... We've, we've seen an effect like this, right? This is a trap. Like, it is a trap. But the difference is, is that enemies will avoid traps. They won't necessarily avoid spirits because they can pass through them. They don't really care about them. They kind of ignore them. So it's like a trap that's really easy to spring. Because the enemy's just going to spring it. But it's a one that would only last for two rounds. So that's... Mm, I mean, it seems kind of weak to me. Especially as we can only place it adjacent as well. It's not like we can, like, put it somewhere that's, like, in a really good position. And, like, yeah, they're going to get it. We kind of have to put it in a good spot. And it's only going to be there for two rounds. We're just laughing at how this can burn a flame demon to death. True. That's actually, like, against certain enemies, this could be very... We could just kill them. Like, early level living spirits. Good night. Because also, unlike a trap, flying enemies can't ignore this, right? So there's, like... It's it's like a trap, but it's not a trap. But it goes, like... So it's, it's like, got similarities to traps, but it's not. Because it can get flying enemies really easily. It's interesting. Would work on flying enemies, yeah. It's like particularly good against shields, like awesome against shields, yeah. What's the spirit mechanic here? Specific summons and buffs. Yeah, so you have summons called spirits. And spirits operate in a different way to summons. There's similarities to summons, but actually the way that they work is different. So the two biggest things are that they take a turn after you rather than before you they are spawned rather than summoned which means they get to immediately act the round in which you play them because also they go after your turn right so you could play it and they can go after your turn um they are unfocusable by enemies so they're kind of like invisible to enemies essentially um they you can't really target them they can't they can't really target be targeted by enemies you can't really target them like they're kind of just there but they lose health over time. So they lose, they take one point of damage at the end of every turn, I believe it was. Isn't it the end of every turn? What was it? At the end of each of its turns. So they're only around for maybe a few rounds, or well, however many rounds we'll see. But this one would be two rounds. So it's kind of like, a, it's like a tweaking of... It's a tweaking of um, of summons. It's like a, a new twist on summons. But it's a bit different. So yeah, I mean, I, I, against certain enemies, this is quite good. But I... And, and, I, and I feel like that's probably... It's probably what it's best for. 
Um, ooh, no, that's what I want. Um, but let's say you were against, if you were against an enemy that didn't have shield, this would be really quite underwhelming because it would just be like, hey man, like, can I just do an attack three or four? You know, if fire isn't strong or waning, it's only like an attack three, which is. It's a, it's a lot of hoops to jump through for three damage, right? But against a specific enemy type, it's really good. So this is feels a bit sideboardy to me. But I mean, if we don't, it's, it's, it's XP. I don't know. We'll see. This is only the first card we've looked at, so. Hey, Kira. Yeah, we're just into the first goal. So we discussed what the mechanics of the character are a little bit. Um, from the cards. Sorry, from the uh, the player mats. And now we're going into the cards. So this is the main mechanic. Well, the only mechanic that this character has that's special. Which is spawns, which is like a... It's a variant on a summon. Untargetable by enemies. They're kind of like ghosts that just kind of move around the board. Well, if they can move. And you control all of their actions. And they act after you rather than before you. And you can use them the turn they come in because they're spawns. So, yeah, there's like a few key differences. And they're definitely a bit more unique. So, I mean... This is one of those cards that's really hard to, like... Rate. Because in certain situations, it's going to be, like, top tier. And then there's going to be other situations in which... Ah, no. The other thing is you still have to get the enemy to walk into it. So... Maybe we're going to have some abilities that will allow us to uh, move enemies around. That'd be interesting. We'll see. Like, maybe we have some control some control elements to move enemies around a little bit. Because, again, like, Living Spirits are ranged. So, I guess you could put... you. Do you have to put it into an uh, empty hex, did it say? Yeah, it's probably a place in this. Unoccupied hex. Yeah, so you couldn't, you couldn't, like, immediately just run up to a... To a living spirit and just chuck it at it. Which is a bit of a shame. That would be kind of cool if you could. So there's... It's not... It's it's still a bit of work, right? We'll see how this compares to the summoner classes in the base game. Yeah. This class gets XP basically every round. Interesting. Okay, so... So far... Okay. So far... I would say average, but poten potential... This has got like a, I reckon this has got a very low floor, but a high ceiling, right? Quite a variance type card. Uh, 45 initiative, terrible initiative. Doesn't do anything for, for anyone. Move three, consume dark, plus one move and jump. All enemies occupying the same hex as a spirit suffer one damage. Now this looks good. I mean, I don't know how often this is going to come off, but I'll take a move four with jump. Every day of the week. Pretty much regardless of what initiative it's on. Uh, you know? I mean, move four jump. Souls. And and if and if this happens quite a bit, then that's really good value. So much so that you might just be playing the move three just to do this. You know, you might ignore this. You might just be doing it for this. Obviously, the initiative means you're going to have to pair up with something, but... Yeah. Really good. Mm -mm. Can probably be a damage. Unlikely to be too damage. Well, any way that you can get extra damage through bottom actions is always good, right? Because you're kind of like... You're kind of getting like extra value out of the economy in a way. Because, you know, most characters do their damage through their top abilities. So if you've got a way to just do a cheeky little bit of extra damage, that's going to be good. I like it. So I, I, I think on the strength of this bottom action... You may well be playing this card. But the top of this is obviously certain scenarios you're just going to love it. Other scenarios you're going to be like, eh, whatever. But at least you can replay it. It's not a burn, so that's good. I wonder if there will be any burns. Probably unlikely because of if they've only got low health. Maybe if they're super, super strong. All right, next card. Confidence Ritual. Attack 3 plus X range 2, where X is equal to the number of active spirits. Okay. 
Well, I guess you're probably not playing this without at least one. So this is going to be what? Attack four, range two at the very worst. If you really wanted to just kill something, attack three, range two is obviously underwhelming, but not terrible. I think this is fine. It's very much like on level. If you could maybe get two spirits, then I think you're starting to get into like, yeah, this is a really, really kind of like solid level one attack, like good level one attack. But attacking for four at range two is, is good. And it's pretty much like there in terms of like value, like playable cards, like with the numerical values, right? And attack for range two is above average. It's... I, I, I've always said like the attack three range three is always the the kind of average. If you're gonna go um, if you're gonna go like to range two, then quite often you see like oh we're gonna add in like poison or we'll add in like there'll be something extra to kind of sweeten the deal. And this is basically an extra point of damage, which is the best thing really, apart from maybe stun or disarm. I think you would say like in terms of like usefulness. You know, stun obviously being the, the best thing, then disarm, and then probably plus one damage, yeah. Um So it's uh it's it is the range two is what kind of keeps it a little bit lower down. Like it's that's how they can justify this. But if you can do an attack five with it, I think you're incredibly happy. And level one spirits have only like two health and won't last long. Yeah, I suppose that's a good point. We've only two health on this one. We'll see how many more we'll, we'll get to. So it's a bit hard to judge this right now. But I say if they're only going to be around for two rounds, of course, by the time you've played your second one, the first one's already dead. So yeah, it's uh, it's going to be that. But attack four, range two, good value. 30 initiative, not really, um, not that great. It's okay, I guess. It's a in a pinch. It's a playable initiative, but it's... It's on the verge of being not not really too playable. Uh, this is a burn. So remove one damage token from one spirit. While this spirit is alive, you gain plus one attack and advantage on all your attacks. Hmm. To signify this, place your character token on the spirit. Interesting. So similar to the top of this, um, I mean, this is going to be purely based on how long, how much life the spirit has, right? There's no... Like, if we're talking about this guy, I mean, getting plus one and advantage for two rounds could be quite good, especially if we've got any kind of, like, AoEs, which we will maybe look into. So this is definitely a, a card that I'd keep my eye on as something that appears to be very strong. But if we can't... I mean, I think you'd probably want to keep it around for at least two rounds, maybe three. And it depends on what attacks we have. Because sometimes the, I can't, uh, an effect like this... You've got ten cards. An effect like this in just combination with a... Um, like an attack like this in combination with just a really big AoE, like just do a double burn, could just be good anyway. As long as obviously you can, you'll have to have the spirit alive, but you know. Like, so just getting one round of this could actually be really good. So we'll see. Depends on what cards we've got to pair with it, right? The bottom combo is so well with another thing. So one thing that makes it possible to have two hour once for a big burn. It gives you plus one attack and advantage. Yeah, we'll see. The bottom may get more valuable as you progress. Yeah, that too. If, uh, if we end up getting like some kind of, I don't know, like just some kind of like, I'm, I'm imagining something like the Void Warden's Ward. Just like a summon that kind of, like a, a spirit that just kind of hangs around and just muddles enemies and just annoys them. But doesn't really do any damage, but has a lot of health. So it just sort of hangs around for like five rounds or something. Four rounds. Like this could be really good on something like that. On, on, on like, it would be a spirit that you'd probably look at and be like, ooh, that's a bit gross. Like it doesn't really do a lot. But in combination with something like this, could unlock quite a powerful um, way of playing, right? So we'll see. Definitely, definitely a card to keep your eye on this one. All right, we've got another one. Dimmed Defense. Spawn Wall of Shadows. Two health. All allies within range one gain shield one. There we go. I called it. I called it. I said we might get, <laughs> might get something like this. 
Create dock, 1 XP. Um, I mean, it's basically, it's shield one for two rounds. The range one's pretty, that's pretty restrictive. But you can replay this. I would say that that, that range one's really quite restrictive. You'd have to make sure that you put it in a really good spot. And like your team's like, we're not moving for this next couple of rounds, right? It creates dark as well, though. So depending on how useful that is with other things, I mean, we've already seen one that would give us additional move and jump, which is a nice use. So here's some dark on the bottom here, but of course it doesn't really apply. But hey, dark generation is good. You thought you could do it all scenario for the infinity and when the spirit dies you lose the buff but not the card yeah i guess in theory this card would remain in your oh i see what you mean that raises a good question what happens when you replay the spirit Like, that's actually a really good question. So, because we have... These guys are replayable, right? So... Remove one damage token from one spirit. While this spirit is alive, you gain plus one. I mean, I would assume that you don't. Like, it just... I, I would just assume that you don't, because that would be weird. Like, it just wouldn't... Like, how do you track that? And it seems a bit powerful. But it does raise a good question, because the way it's kind of worded... I, you could, in theory, um, uh, you know, imply that while this spirit is alive, so what happens when you replay it? It's back alive again. Like, it's... I don't know. It's an interesting question. Unknown Force. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the quest. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> Your character token will be gone, thus no bonus. Yeah, but... Yeah, I, I get that. But that's why I don't think this... Th the way that this reads doesn't read like that, I think, on first pass. Because it says, remove one damage token from one spirit. Sure. While this spirit is alive, I gain plus one attack and advantage on all of my attacks. Right. To signify this, place your character token on the spirit. Sure. I think, in theory, what it should say, it should actually just say something like, remove one damage token from one spirit. Place what your character token on the spirit, or something like that. Or then just, or, and even, maybe even just change, or even just change the wording of this. Do you know what I mean? Like, the fact that this is kind of at the bottom of it, in a weird way. Like, I don't know. While this spirit is alive. You could just put, like, until this spirit dies. Until this spirit dies, you gain plus one attack. Until this spirit dies. Maybe that's not great templating. I don't know. It just, it doesn't quite like hang. I can absolutely see how somebody could infer that from, from this. I could. I mean, like, it, I, I, I personally wouldn't have come to that conclusion because of just, well, that would be like bonkers good. So I just, you know, just logically follow it through. Like when, you know, a spirit dies, the card goes to your discard or your lost pile. If it was a burn and any associated things that were with it are gone but this would in theory still hang out in your active area because it's not dead like so this card would still be in your active area it doesn't say when you get rid of this card from your active area does that make sense <clears throat> you guess the card burns when the spirit dies yeah i mean I just feel like until this spirit dies would actually just be that would that would nail it but maybe that's not like a good way of templating other things like perhaps that then opens up another can of worms I'm not thinking about like oh what clarifies dying <laughs> I don't know but that that would be like the way that I would possibly reword it 
Uh, so dim defense. So spawn wall of shadows we've just gone through. So all allies within range one gain shield one. It's sweet with the red guard. Oh yeah, really. Three uh, shield spikes. Loves this card. I do think the... I do think the range one is a little bit... It's... <sighs> It's a little bit restrictive, but the thing is, is that you could run up and just play it. And the fact that it's only supposed to be around for two turns and you're probably going to go early and just run and chuck it down, you know, where it's going to be most useful. Maybe right next to an ally or something like that to just help them out. Maybe that's okay. Maybe that's actually just fine. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen it being range two, but then maybe that would, maybe uh, maybe they want you to actually have to kind of move forward with this character a little bit more. One of the problems that other summoning characters have have had in the past, and very true of, I mean, to be honest, this is more of a problem with concentrated rage than it is anything else. But two minis, you know, like the prevalent way of playing is, I don't care where I am, I just care about what the bear's doing. So that's. Um, a negative thing of that character, I think. It makes it unique, but I think it's actually a negative um, thing to, to the character. And uh, I, I, I think characters, you should be sticking together as a team and moving through the scenario. Uh, the circles sometimes doesn't do a lot like herself. Like a lot of it, she's just sort of like, you know, staying on a spot and summoning and moving things. Like she doesn't sometimes have to move around too much. Uh, to be fair, she has some good movement cards and some, some other tricks up her sleeve. So she doesn't quite suffer so much. But maybe this is a, you know, a character that wants to be kind of going forward and staying in the kind of uh, the arena of conflict, if you like, rather than running away and just letting the summons do their thing and be like, right, there you go, you know. Another work meeting. See you in a bit, Kira. Good luck. Have fun. <laughs> it is a level one card. That's true. It is just a level one card. I just feel like it's a little bit restrictive, especially as it's going away. Um, but then having said that, Enhancement Field was range one as well. And that's a one round effect. You could play it as your bottom though, which kind of made it maybe a little bit better in that sense. So yeah, maybe I'm being a bit harsh. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh. Uh, move three. Shield one self. Retaliate one range two. Ooh, so that's air and dark. This character isn't one that wants to take hits. So I don't feel like this is like some kind of tanking strategy. The consumes are good if elements are waning and you're going to get hit by something. Yeah, I mean, if you, you could use these to take elements away from people. Which is sometimes quite good. Also, the chances are you will take a little bit of damage here and there, right? Some enemies are going to draw like a target two or something like that. So even, even the best tanking strategies can just go out of the window when you're against certain enemies. That just attack everything or have a lot of targets or have uh, AoE abilities and things like that. So you can't always force all of the damage to one thing. So having at least something in your back pocket... It's a move three on 12 initiative as well. So now that's pretty damn playable just as as a card. So yeah. It's an opportunistic effect. Yeah. You think this card is the best initiative this class has? Interesting. Okay, well, this is obviously a great early initiative, but it's not... We're not talking sub 10 here. Sub 10 is really where like you want to have one or at least one card i would say sub 10 would be would be great so if this is the earliest initiative we get maybe we'll be considering um initiative boots for this character i don't know so far our movement seems to be okay so yeah I, maybe i'm being a bit harsh on the top effect here but the bottom effect 12 initiative move three extremely playable with some added um situational effects yeah it's, it's good uh, ethereal canine okay here we go our first attacking one spawn phantom hound 
Um, so it's got one health, which means it's going to die the round we play it, which is interesting. Move three, attack two. The spirit only attacks each enemy moved through with the move ability. Oh. That's kind of spicy, chat. I quite like that. So you could run up, play the hound. You get to... So different to other summons, you get to control all abilities to do with um, these spirits. So you control them. So unlike summons, we get to control them. So we can hopefully get at least two things. Also, we can stop on hexes that are included with enemies. So unlike something like Trample, for example, where you'd have to kind of move through and then you'll have to end up in a hex and that you'd obviously lose the value of that final hex. Presumably, we would actually get that value of that final hex, right? Can you use items with it? No, because it's like, it's not you taking your turn. That will be, that's a consideration for like summons always is that if a lot of your damage is coming through summons, then yeah, like your item progression is different. Sometimes you're quite a weak character in terms of like needing gold for that kind of thing. You might be looking more at enhancements, I guess. <clears throat> Does it include enemies that ends its movement in? Your thoughts are probably. I, I think it's probably. It does say the word through, but I mean, you'll be inside the enemy. <laughs> I think it probably does. Ending on a hex is the same as move through. I think so. Because usually that would never come up. Like that doesn't come up in the rules. Because two figures can't occupy the same space. But this is like the first time that that can kind of happen. But these guys are not considered figures. So it's it's weird. Yeah, this, this guy's going to have to have loads of FAQ. <laughs> Because there's this, um, like, printing this, it's very normal. Like, we've seen this line of text on many different cards before. But the fact that you can end your turn on a hex with an enemy in it does raise the question. But I would also stipulate that, yeah, I think that it could. Because if you think about it, then that's like, the potential is just attack two against three things. Which is, you know, really good for a reusable level one. But it's not like, you know, that's, if it was any more than that, it would probably have to be a burn. And and also there are limitations because it can only be for one round. You'll have to position yourself properly. The enemies all have to be next to each other. You know, so you can actually do the movement through. Oh, actually, no, you can't even do that because, oh yeah, you can, one, two, three. Because And also you have to summon it in an empty hex. So there's, there's, there are like restrictions, enough restrictions, so that you have to work for it. It's strong, but you have to work for it. You'd say that you cannot attack the enemy, you end your move on? Interesting. Controversial. I mean, if that's the case, then it's just four damage, which I think... I mean, it's fine, but I think it makes me a lot less excited <laughs> than the potentially six. <clears throat> do I want you to post initiative breakdown for level one, even if it's kind of a spoiler? Um, No, it's okay. You don't have to do that. I think we kind of like, we'll, we'll know as we go along. Uh, place one damage token on one spirit. This spirit adds plus two attack to its next attack this round. Ah, uh, doesn't combo with the Phantom Hound. Not that you could, but you know. Imagine. Is he not for three attack? Well, we haven't. This is the only one we've seen that can attack so far. So I guess we're going to have to see how that does. But if there's some kind of... If there's some kind of like... AoE? If there's an AoE spirit? I 
this could be great. Really good. You kind of sacrifice... A turn to just get one big turn. Which, to be honest, is, is going to be worth it. Because you'd rather do the damage quicker. So, for example, if, if you were attacking something for two... And, like, let's just say it was just a regular spirit and its ability is attack two. And it has two health. It's absolutely worth you to pretty much, like, do this or do this. Of course, it's worth to do this because it's extra one damage. But it would still be worth you doing this because you'd be killing it quicker. The only, I guess, the only negative to that would be if you are planning on following up with something like this where actually you do want it active. So... You know, there might be some situations where actually you don't want to do that. But, like, in theory, just doing more damage quicker is good. Right? Won't work with AoE. Oh, because all of the AoE ones are, like, one health, are they? I guess we'll see if that is... Seems like crap because the spirit's turn was worth two plus damage worth of value anyway. Well, that depends on what level you are. Right? Because doing two attacks could be better because you get two draws. So you have to lose a turn on that spirit. Basically, yeah, you lose a turn of the spirit. I don't mind it. Like, I think if you want to kill something quick, it can help. The speed could be worth it if you get to kill it off. Yeah. It really depends on, like, you know, there'd be certain enemies that you'd just be like, I really wish we could kill it. Like, can we kill this thing quickly? And it might be worth it. It's also a bottom action, so... You know, it's like... You're not giving up so much, maybe, of your own turn. It could be a really good, like, one-turn combo with this. Don't know. We'll see. If this was a top action, I don't think I would like it. Because it's a bottom action, sometimes you just don't, you don't care about moving or you don't have any other you know, valuable bottom actions to play, so could do something <clears throat> it just seems a bit too low value for its cost well i guess we haven't seen maybe i haven't seen enough spirits yet that's fair but i think a, i think if you were to consume the dark to get plus three attack and you could just try and kill something a bit quicker and it means it's not going to attack you that's around you're not taking damage yeah maybe it's a little bit weak in terms of like the overall value of it but uh, i don't know we'll see um horde of bones up next spawn skeletal archer here we go so is this the one this is probably the one or something similar to this um so two health two move range two one attack target two ps1 That's pretty good. And the range two is a bit... Mm, like target two, range two always feels like you need some good planning there. You know, to get that off. You'd be surprised how often that doesn't come off. It can't add to multiple attacks. Yeah, no, because it's it's next attack, not next attack, not the entire next attack. Yeah. Bam, bam, bam. <clears throat> you can't use that last bomb if the spirit is on one HP. A bit restrictive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. You have to time it right. Um. Hmm. I mean, this is... You're not unhappy about this, right? I mean, it's pretty good. 
but you'd have to get you'd have to get a good amount of the targets right if this thing was only attacking one thing this is why you controlling the actions for this is so important because you could actually you know kind of try and force these situations a bit more the pierce one helps to keep it a little bit more relevant into higher levels and also just gives you a little bit of extra value against just you know the occasional enemy low levels that, that get shield so like obviously against the living spirit it's still pretty poor but you know against a bandit that's now shielded up you know it gives you something the wind's important for some stuff later it's a nice free free wind generation too it's a it's a late late initiative card which i think i quite like for this because you probably want to run in and do this late let this guy do its thing then maybe go early on the next turn let it attack the same two things again and then like it dies right so you would go late run to a good position to hopefully drop this it takes its turn after you so hopefully just the target too gets the, gets the attacks off then you maybe go early the next round and uh you can then like respond you know maybe run away whatever it is that you need to do then it can do that attack again on those same two things maybe Is there a way to enhance cards in Crimson Scales? Yes. No enhancement dots on this guy, though. I think that's probably fair. Have we seen any enhancement dots yet? Oh, yeah, one there. It feels very risky business to do that. Plus, you'd have to probably come up with, like, your own enha enhancement costs. Wouldn't you? Because it's not technically a summon. I don't know. They'd have to have like some sort of rule to be like, oh, by the way, the spirit caller pays the same enhancement costs as summons. Kind of weird. Your attack modifier deck improves. It's good at flipping plus ones. We'll look at the perks when we finish all of the level one and X cards, I think. This is good. This is very good. It still feels pretty fair, though. Like, it's not... It's just going to feel nice to play with, I think. It doesn't feel too crazy strong. It's it's good. And it's going to require a little bit of um, planning to play it properly. And uh, it's going to feel good when you kind of get those... If you can get that late then early turn back to back. Like, that feels like it's going to be quite cool. I feel good, for sure. Um... 79 initiative, like we said, is good. Swap positions with any consumed dark money token and an unoccupied hex within range three. Then loot one. You may perform this ability as if you are in a hex occupied by one spirit. Okay, so consume dark to swap positions with any money token in an unoccupied hex within range three. Then perform a loot one. It's kind of interesting one. Because sometimes money is just on the floor as well. Like sometimes they just chuck money like at the back of a room. So in many ways, this could be like a little sneaky teleport that you could just kind of hop to the other side of the room. It could be interesting. And I like this loot one, very flexible loot one. Assuming that you're going to have at least one spirit out. Probably on average one spirit you're going to have out. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility on that. So when I say you're probably always playing the top. I don't know if this is good enough. This just feels way stronger. I don't know. Certain, I, could, I can foresee a scenario in the future where this ability is like game changer. It's like, oh, you've got to... You got to get over all of this difficult terrain. You got to do this. You know, no, I don't. I'm just going to swap <laughs> with a money token at the end of the, the room. See ya. <laughs> you know, like it feels like eh, it's like averagely not great, but then certain scenarios, it's going to be like two mini swap. You're going to just be very happy. It's a very good thing this card isn't fast. Yes, yeah, steal steal money away from people. 
Definitely, definitely prefer the top to the bottom. But I, I, I think this is interesting. This is interesting. Incorporated transport. Spawn ghost carriage. So two health. Four move. Force any figure occupying the same hex to move with this spirit during its move ability. Interesting. So it's like a... It's a dust devil. It's a, it's a high-powered dust devil, huh? Sand devil. Supercharged sand devil. Zoom in. Hey, Dareth. Just join. How many cards have we gone through before this? Also, I'm frozen for you. I am frozen for everybody. That's weird. Bear with me, team. Uh, look at that face. <laughs> Stop abusing me. What is going on? Hang on. You're back? back that was weird i'm not sure what, what happened there <laughs> i always thought i was practicing ventriloquism i'm very good can't you tell we've gone through a few cards three or four yeah we've gone through like five cards now six cards maybe Okay, so ghost carriage. How do we feel about the ghost carriage? Creates air. One XP. Guess we could just like force enemies into traps. Also could just help. Um, could help us move. Because we could summon it next to us, and then it could just move on to us, and then we could just move on again. So, you know, it's a cheeky way for us to get a, a sneaky move three or top action, possibly. We wanted to co cover a great distance, or help an ally who's fallen behind. Like here you go, jump in the ghost carriage, right? Most useful free movement for us or allies. Yeah. It's the kind of ability that... It's the kind of ability that's like... You, you don't really like just want to play. You kind of need to get some more... Some good value out of it, I think. Like... If you're playing this and just be like, Hey guys, does anyone need to move? Like next round? I was like, nah, I'm okay actually. I don't know. It feels like it could be... You could be disappointed with the results. But I'll tell you what it does do. It does free up uh, bottom actions for us, huh? You know, if we get like a free move because it's two rounds of this. So that's that's you know, potentially like seven movement if we just keep it on us. Right? So the first time we spawn it, we put it like behind us. Then it moves on to our hex then it takes us with us for three then we, it stays on the same hex as us and then we just kind of next turn and it moves another four so it's just if anything it's seven points of movement for us over two turns not bad especially if you've got other really cool bottom abilities to play instead of moves <clears throat> It can bring enemies too far away to hit you as well. Yeah, that's true. Can, can kind of like do like a like a pseudo immobilize kind of thing. Can kind of have that effect against certain enemy types. Most importantly, you can force escorted characters back to the starting room. Oh, finally. A way for us to deal with uh with Redthorn. <laughs> Just keep Redthorn like at the back constantly. 
yeah, I mean, that would make some escort missions really trivial. Actually, excuse me. We made it really trivial. Two to three damage with rupture. Oh, that's also really good. Yeah, really good synergy with rupture. Nice card. Wonderful thematics. Yeah, I think it's a good card. I, I really like the um, I like the general theme of this character, and uh, it's nice. It's nice that we've got some that are not just damage. Like the easiest thing to do here would have been just to design a bunch of ones that do damage, right? Don't really do anything else. So it's good to see that we've got like a really kind of fun card that could maybe like make you approach the scenario in a slightly different way. I'm always a fan of cards like that. That they kind of give you just like a different option or a different way of playing in a, you know, for a, for a little while. And that's what this does. Which is good. <clears throat> have I tried too many swap card in escort missions? I actually haven't because I don't think I've ever had too many's, but... I would assume the figure one would work, right? There's only one card that would work, and it's the figure, and it's the burn. You can do it one time, but you'd have to swap with figures. So unless there's a figure in the first room, like, do you know what I mean? Like, the swap is not great. Forced movement is great, because you don't need that other figure to swap to. Does that make sense? Uh, move four. Very good. All allies and spirits move through. May perform move one. Ooh. Ah. So. Maybe a little way of getting Wall of Shadows to be relevant again. And of course potentially a way to make this happen. Now, if you could time this into the right spot. Okay. Maybe still a little bit tricky, but gives you uh, an option there, right? Can't do a move six and move through an extra thing if you enhance it. Yeah. The the allies thing's fairly powerful. Like even if you if you were to like disregard the spirits for a second and just think about allies, this is fairly powerful because it is a move one like action. So of course, if they've got a pair of boots, they can add add to it, which then allows them to free up their bottom action. I guess the only problem is, is that 74 initiative might not be the best for this kind of thing. I don't know. Could be. Could be. Interesting idea. You could also, I guess, if you wanted to go early, you could play... Because it's a bottom action. If you had air, you could, like, kind of immediately do this, right? So you could, in theory... So you could, in theory, kind of like play this. Let's say you play it in front of you. And then you could move and you could immediately move it. So you can immediately move through it and then immediately move it. Which could be important if you're sort of surrounded, right? Or it's a very, very tight. I don't know. Yeah, I think this is this is really this is really quite useful. But again, we need to find some more spirits, maybe that make better use out of it. But I think in general, this is very useful, not just for the spirits, but also for your allies. But trying to time it is going to be the key thing, right? <clears throat> Add rocket boots and you can have a um, move nine jump and move anything move through. Yeah, I mean, of course, yeah, you can add stuff to this too. Yeah, this is this is a cool card. I like this card. 
Uh, you're, you'll be playing a 74 initiative move four pretty much regardless, but it helps that there's actually a, a pretty fun ability on the top two. And this, of course, is is very um, very synergistic. Could open up a lot of pathways. A lot of possibilities maybe for your team too. All right, Midnight Feast. Heal three plus X, range three, where X is equal to the number of active spirits. Okay. So heal three, range three is again, like an attack, it's a pretty bog standard heal. So if we're talking like heal four, range three, heal five, like I, I say this every stream when we look at heal cards. For me, healing is all about little and often. It doesn't need to be in great numbers. I just like to you know, keep things ticking over and keep removing poison and wound and stuff like that when you get it. Try and make sure you remove it early and don't get too bogged down with it. So for me, the difference between a heal three and a heal four is like whatever. Like obviously it's a little bit better, but it's not like, you know, we're not talking like attacks, you know, It'd be different. It's different when we talk about the other card, which was as an attack, right? <clears throat> Rumbling Advance is the best level one heal in all of Gloomhaven. And you play it for the top? Someone's not playing the crack card, right? <laughs> Excuse me? There's only bottom half of that card. Uh, anyway. Yes, it's a good heal. But I said, for, for me personally... This could be heal three. It could be heal four. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> it's the same in my eyes. I don't see it as being much better. As it being much different. You know? This, this, is, this is one of the ones where I'm like, I wouldn't care if I got the buff or not. Just that it might be nice to like get the full heal, I guess, or something. But yeah, it's fine. Bottom's a bit meh. Okay. 18 initiative. The next time a spirit dies, all characters within range one of the hex in which it died perform a heal three self and all enemies within range one of the hex suffer two damage and gain curse then lose this card. Two XP, burn. And obviously it's a, like a persistent effect until it goes away. Okay. So, okay, let's let's talk about like what what would constitute like good value here with these figures, right? So heal three self. If if two allies could heal, so heal six, right? So that's about six points of healing. I think that's reasonable to ask for. Maybe three enemies, six damage. So and and three curses. So. Three curses, six damage, six heal. I mean, I think that's pretty much... That is worthy of a burn. I mean, three curses. It's a decent amount of cursing. And as we know, cursing is quite powerful and has been, have kind of gradually been sort of nerfed or lowered a little bit with its prevalence and its numbers, right? You know, Curse Nado is not... Not a, uh, a good benchmark. <laughs> Not good in your opinion? What, six damage, heal six, three curses? I think it's it's probably about where a burn would be. Not that I like those kinds of burns, but it would be what I would expect to be a burn, you know? Like it's it's verging on that. Yeah, that that sounds like it would probably be a burn ability, you know? Not that it's something that I would love, but the numbers are kind of leaning that way. You could heal all allies by three or do basically one curse nado. Yeah, if you can somehow get your, the spirit. I think the problem with the problem with the spirits, right? I mean, the best one to do this would be would be possibly the ghost carriage. Because you could, in theory, pick up an enemy or pick up several enemies and then, like, well, actually, you, you couldn't move more than one, I guess, right? Yeah, that's a bit weird. Because that could go... 
How would that work? Okay, that's enough. This is, I've just figured like this is another thing that's weird because, because you can occupy the same hex. I mean, obviously no two figures can occupy the same hex, but I guess in theory you could pick people up and drop them off. So if, in theory, the ghost carriage could have some really fun synergy with this because you could try and group things together with it. And then you hit, blow the ghost carriage up, you know, when it dies. I don't know. I quite, I quite like that. Do you not think that's kind of cool? That could set you up for a really nice turn. You'd have to be playing three or four players, though. This ghost card would be pretty trash at two players. It would be, yeah, it would be garbage at two players. The dog would be good, actually. You can trigger it immediately. Yeah, the dog, maybe too. If, if there's a spot and it works and the fact that your spirit can occupy the same hex as an enemy does mean that in theory you could go right into the pack of enemies that's surrounded completely and just do it all, right? That's kind of magical Christmas land, but you know, the, the idea is there. You like it, it's just a magic Christmas land card for better or worse. Yeah. You know, on, on average, it's going to be... What? Like I said, on average, I reckon you're probably looking at six to eight damage with three to four curses and possibly one heal. I feel like the heal is the one that's going to be the difficult part because you, you want to focus on doing the damage, which then means that it's unlikely that there's going to be that many allies, if at all, any allies within range one, right? The, the, the problem with this is this is counterintuitive because ideally you want the range one to be completely full of enemies. So then you wouldn't get this. So it's kind of like the trade-off. You know, one of these two numbers is going to be better. And I would say this is obviously where you want to be. Not here. Good to kill in a doorway? Yeah. Quite possibly. I, I actually quite like this. The more I think about it, the more I actually I'm kind of drawn to it. I like the kind of combo nature of it. And we've got 10 cards. And there hasn't really been any other cards I've been like, yeah, let's burn it, you know? I guess we were maybe thinking about this if we if the right kind of card came up, but honestly, so far it's probably our best burn in terms of just like raw potential and fun. Would I rather one damage or a heal six? Depends if that one damage killed the enemy. Trick question. Moving on. Shrieking Spirit. Spawn Wailing Banshee. 2 HP. Attack 2. Move 3. Ignore the shield value of the target. Immobilize. Create air. 2 XP. And okay, so this is a burn. This is a burn spirit. Ooh. And it's only around for two turns. Ignore the shield value of the target and immobilize them. So this is a two-round immobilize. Bear in mind that we can kind of move, you know, we're, we're basically like, we're a ghost. We're an invisible, invisible flying. We got it all. So we could move to wherever really we probably need to. Ignoring shields, really quite nice. Ooh, ah, this is... The cost is high, but the reward is is actually pretty damn good. It's just that the immobilize is obviously not going to work against every enemy. It won't work very well against... Like, for example, if you went to go and attack the living spirit, I mean, they're ranged anyway, so the immobilize wouldn't really matter. I guess it would be quite good against... You know, something like a, a, a bandit guard elite or city guard elite or something. <clears throat> Use this with the attack boost. 
No, because I think you want... I don't know. I think the va the value of the, the, the two-turn immobilized, I think, is quite important here. Like, you... You don't really want to accelerate this card. Like, this, this is kind of the card that you play, and you'll be like, okay, great. We can do some damage, and we can lock down this enemy for two rounds. That's going to be really useful. Like, just... This enemy's locked down for two rounds, and we can do damage to it, you know, in the interim as well. So, that's the way I kind of view this. Do they get retaliated on? No. They're immune to retaliate. Use it with confidence. Rituals bottom. Is that the plus damage? Yeah. Oh, the double burn though. Oh, I like the thinking, but it's all in. No, this is. No, this is you gain it. The spirit doesn't gain it, right? No, it doesn't work. Right? It's you gaining the plus one attack and advantage, not the spirits. It's it's still the, the spirits are still performing the attack. Right? This is us. There was an action to remove damage off a spirit. Oh, you're right. There was, wasn't there? Oh, so, oh yeah, so in theory you could, act, oh, I see what you mean by using, so, yeah, okay. Sorry, you're right. This is actually has some synergy. We could lock it down for three turns. Lock something down for three turns. And then we just carry on doing our, yeah, actually, that's not so bad. I mean, all of your summons are, so far, maximum two rounds anyway. So, like, it's not like we have a, a better spirit to put it on right now. We don't. It is a double burn. But, yeah, okay, I, I like the thinking. Definitely, if you want to, if you want to, like, if you were to say, like, we're going to have some strong turns. I think it's a good way of just being like, right, let's go for it. Let's, let's, let's have strong turns. And that, that will definitely do that. <clears throat> think it does work well extending a burn card yeah but then you're burning another card to extend it do you know what i mean like the value the value of burning it to just get one more turn is not there in my opinion like i wouldn't like i wouldn't burn another card to just get one more turn of this, right? This is two turns of this, and it's a burn. I, Why would I burn another card to get just three? But I think if you can obviously take advantage of the plus one attack and advantage in a really good way as well, then it, yeah, then I think it starts to become good value. But yeah, I think you have to be careful of just being like, oh yeah, let's get it for another round because like, I don't think that, strictly just that adds up. But if you can get good value off of the plus one attack and advantage, then yeah. Like, otherwise it's not. It's just you're just throwing good money after bad, you know. In some ways, yeah. doubling doubling down on an effect in a big way. <clears throat> yeah, you need to make use of it. Yeah, for sure. The bottom is move to jump. Consume air to perform heal two, range two instead. Okay. Move one, perform attack two instead. This seems pretty good. This actually seems really, really flexible. So you could just do a heal two. Move, move, move one if you wanted to. Yeah, this is super flexible. At the very worst, it's a move to jump, 
then just to move one. Which is still decent. Yeah, this is really, really flexible. I like the bottom of this card a lot, actually. Which is good because, you you know, this is the kind of card you're just going to kind of keep until the right time and then you're going to go bang and, and drop it. It's not like a, an early, not necessarily an early game play. Could, could be an early game play, but could also be, you know, mid or late game play too. This, this though is really very flexible. Very modular, even its base form is pretty decent. Yeah, exactly. I think if you didn't consume these two elements, you just did move two jump and then another move one. That's, that's getting you places. That's probably going to do enough. Just having the jump maybe on the first two will be enough. Of course, you can always add boots as well. 26 initiative. We said about the initiatives on this character maybe aren't the best. And this is fairly early. I mean, if this is the kind of early range this character gets, then maybe you're going to be forced into using it anyway. But yeah, this is a really... Um, I like this card a lot because you've got a really good kind of burn that can lock something down that's troublesome and will just work really well. But also you've just got a very usable bottom card and decent initiative as well to use alongside it. So yeah, this is a, this is a home run. Definitely going to be playing that card, I think. Uh, Toxic Charm. Attack 1, range 3, poisoned. Little 3 hex AoE. Um, convert air into dark. This, of course, would work quite well with that plus one attack and advantage that we we're talking about. So... That would get, make it an attack two on three things with advantage and poison. It's very good. Can you say you love the card color? Yeah, I mean... I, I, I think the art for this character is great. Although I will say there's a lot of greens in Gloomhaven in general. I mean, there's only so many colors you can use, right? But I think there's a lot of greens. A lot, a lot of greens. So I think that the top of this is, is, actually, is actually pretty decent. And very similar to... Very similar to like kind of early Plague Herald cards. Not quite as good as... Is it Spreading the Plague? I can't remember what it is. Or... I can't remember what the card is. They, they have a... It's a bigger AoE, I think. But this is... Um, yeah, I mean, with the buff as well, this could be very good. Sawbones has similar, yeah. I think it's good. Very playable, and you have some inbuilt combos to make it even better. So that's a win for me. Like, I'd be pretty happy to play this as this vanilla attack one, range three, poison. Just to get poison up on three things. But also, if I was to combo it with the other card for plus one attack and advantage, we'd feel very good about it. Vaccine. Oh, yeah, that's a. Another stun? No. Getting our cards mixed up. But yeah. These kinds of effects to just poison a bunch of enemies, like when you enter a new room, poison like the group. They're always just very effective. They're always just very effective. And the good thing is you get to draw cards, attack cards, which we love. It's not just a range three poison with no attack bolted on. I don't know about this um, changing of the element. Not sure how relevant that will be, but I've seen us have good use of both of these, so... We'll see. <clears throat> Vaccine is the same AOE in effect, just no element to consume. Huh. Yeah, so... Very solid. 59 initiative is not solid, though. Pretty trash. Dislike this a lot. Just unusable as um, any kind of initiative, right? You're never going to choose this as your initiative. Uh, move three. If you end your turn in a hex occupied by a spirit, perform heal to self. Eh. I mean, this character's got a lot of moves. I've noticed that we've actually... I don't feel like we're going to struggle with our movement, are we, with this guy? 
sure. I like, mean, like a move three heal two is really good if you get it, but you have to end your turn in the hex occupying it. I guess you could play the spirit and then immediately move into it if you wanted to. If you needed the heal. Feels like some, some pretty big hoops though. Considering that we do just have like a heal three <laughs> that we could just do. Here's the bottom action though, so you know, little incremental heals off of bottom actions I'm usually a fan of. Move three heal two is great and it shouldn't be too hard to do, yeah. Yeah, it's been good on other characters before. And it'll be good again. So. It's good on like empathetic assault. It's great on the mind thief. Very similar thing. Except it's move two I think. Obviously there's a little bit more of a setup for this. But you should in theory be able to get it to work. This sort of. This feels like. You know the first time round you're going to be playing the top. Maybe in the second time round. Maybe you'll be playing this and then. Maybe the next time round you play the top, the next time round you play this. Like, you kind of alternate between top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, you know, as you kind of progress through the scenario. That feels kind of like probably what it'll end up being. I think a, a very kind of like average card, but like a good, like it's a role player card. I, I kind of just wish this initiative was at least something that could lean us in one direction or the other. I don't know. But you can't have good initiative on every card, right? Some cards are going to have to suck. So Whistling Winds. Attack 3. Target 1 enemy adjacent to a spirit. Consume Air to add push 2. Consume Dark to add Curse. Attack 3. Target 1 enemy. Okay. So this is like... It's a melee attack. But it's like unlimited range, kind of. Because it's like... Like, it's still a melee attack. But it's... In theory, it's like... A ranged stat, but it's not. It's a melee attack. But it's kind of like pseudo range. It does say adjacent to a spirit, not like... I think being on top is considered to be adjacent, right? But I think there were some rules about that. Isn't there not? Uh, spirits cannot target enemies which occupy their hex. Okay, no. So yeah, it's still adjacent. Then. It still works. This is like what the one Frosthaven class can do. Oh, you mean the uh, the death uh, the death walker? Yeah, with the kind of attacking next to the um, the shadows. Sure. Yeah, it's very similar actually. Yeah, you're right. Except for the fact that in this one, your shadows are actually spirits and can do stuff as well. <laughs> I feel like the problem with that character is the is getting the shadows going. But I think that they've done a good job improving it since the first version came out. That's the character that shot up, that actually shot up my um, my rankings after they um, revised it. It was the character I was most worried about. And then actually, once they sort of tweaked it, came back with some new changes, I just feel much better about it. The first version was practically unplayable. Yeah, I mean, like, that's the way I felt about it. I mean, I didn't know, but my gut was that it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel like there was enough generation. It just felt like... You were hoping that stuff died to you to make a shadow once every now and again. I just didn't didn't feel like it was going to have very fun turns. Um, Obviously, attack three curse is going to be fantastic. Attack three with, um, with push two, situationally, can be also quite good. Solid. I, and this is, a, again, another just, like, solid. I would definitely be playing this for this a top action, I think. Also, it would be quite cool to get some value out of, like, the shield ones and stuff. So, you know, you got the kind of the... The, um... The shadow wall. And being able to actually get a little bit of value out of it by, like, getting it to attack. Well, you don't get hit to attack. You're attacking. But, you know, you know what I mean. It's like you can kind of get a bit of attack value out of things that don't usually have it. <clears throat> uh, 82 initiative is late initiative, usable late initiative. So it could 
work quite well because if you want if the spirits are going to be on the board and you're just going to kind of leave them maybe the enemy wants to come closer to you because of course all of our play spirit actions are on the top so you can't play a spirit and use this straight away you need uh, some items for that if you wanted to do that um move two all spirits perform a move one create that now that's good that is good because I feel like you just want to position some of them a little bit better occasionally. So this is similar to the other one, which was the give everything a move one action. But this also makes an element as well. Generally speaking, for characters that use elements heavily, move to create your element is always good. Like, it's just... I need this card because what you're going to do is you're going to consume the dark probably with your top action and then the bottom action will be moved to make the dark again. So then on the next turn, you've got it, right? It's very important for you to have the kind of consume top, generate bottom, consume top, generate bottom. Like that flow is really important to keep for characters that are really uh, rely on elements. Now, I don't think this character from what we've seen so far relies on elements to do well but it certainly makes their character do a lot more so i thought that that's a it's a big plus <clears throat> another good blazing pit combo on the bottom yeah with the move the move that summon onto an enemy yeah, i think that's like the best value you could get from this is like move to then get that guy to like trigger off of something and create dark. That would feel like a really strong action. Really good. That one attack two bottom with dark is nice. Yeah, instead of uh, the move one, you do this. Move two jump, then attack two. Yeah. There's also... What was the other? There was a, another one here. Oh, yeah, that, that funny one. I guess this one... Th this does start to make this a little bit more attractive. And this extra move and jump. That's good too. On the blazing fire though, so. Yeah, very solid. Absolutely a card you want to play. All right, onto the X cards. So far, I feel like the level ones have been... I mean, all of the level ones seem pretty playable. Like, you know, they're, they're not... There's none that I've been like, oh, I just don't want to play that. Like, I just don't see why I would play that. I think maybe... Maybe the only one. Um... No, to be honest, all of them. I think maybe all of them. Apart from maybe the heel. <laughs> no, I think the heel's fine. I actually think the bottom of that card seems like it could be quite fun as well. Yeah, I think all of them have been playable. None of them have been like, this is not a great card. Like there's a redeeming element to all of the cards for sure. So, um, you know, we can take 10 cards, so that's also good. So, Fear the Reaper, Spawn Death Eater, 2 health, 3 move, 1 attack, range 3. Once per round, if you kill an enemy within range 3 of this spirit, during your turn, you may remove 1 damage token from it. Ooh, hello. Okay. Okay. That's kind of funky. I like this. Would Bottom of Whistling Winds give an extra attack with Ethereal Canine? Um, no, because... I think it's the way that Ethereal Canine is worded. The movability. It doesn't say with a movability. It says with the movability, which would imply this movability. I think. Good question, though. Might be one to be clarified, but I would say no. I actually, I feel like, I feel like this Death Eater is, 
I, I like the idea of this. It's not a burn either. So it's not like you really need to like, if, if it dies after two rounds and it just doesn't quite work out. Hey, you've played an attack one range three summon that was out for two rounds. Fine. Like it's, I guess it's maybe on a slight, slightly lower value, but like it's not like wasted. This can let you keep confidence ritual for a while. Yeah, true. Oh, imagine stacking confidence ritual onto this and actually going off and killing things. That would feel really good. There's always like something that's going to screw you up in Gloomhaven though, you know? It always feels like in Gloomhaven, a lot of the combos can just fall apart. Maybe a bit too easily. But that would be fun. Put it on this guy. Keep trying to kill things. You keep getting that plus one attack. And I really, I love that idea. Oh, that makes me kind of excited to play this character, actually. Literally, you're just like tr desperately trying to keep him alive. Like, no, let me kill it. Like, there's like an enemy on one health and like your, your like team is like, oh, I could just go in here. And you're like, don't you dare. I need to be the one to kill it. Don't you touch that enemy. It looks like it has to be you that kills the enemy. Yes. It says if you kill an enemy within range three during your turn. So if another if another uh, spirit kills it, doesn't count. It has to be you. So it has quite good synergy with something like Whistling Winds top as well, right? You know, just trying to kill stuff. I mean, it's unlikely that you could use Whistling Winds or you'd want to with this, though, because he's uh, he's ranged. But, I, I mean, the good thing about this is that because they're invisible, realistically, you could just move this guy into a really aggressive position and just attack something within the range 3, right? Whereas usually you would pull away from that way of play. But because the enemies are never going to target him, even though he's ranged, you could just walk him right up to enemies and just be you know, plinking off another enemy somewhere else. Right? You don't need, or he could just be on top of an enemy or whatever. Like he doesn't, there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of the downsides of having, well, I say downsides, but a lot of the, the kind of, the reasons why ranged is certain ways, they kind of go away because you don't have to worry, like you're never in danger. It's never in danger of, of dying to an enemy. So you, and you control everything that it does. So you could have a lot of... In theory, you could have a lot of um, control over this. <clears throat> this also avoids kills with granted attacks. If you kill an enemy, yes. But then I don't think we have any granted attacks, right? Because of the way the whole, like, you, your spirits are not an ally of you. Like, I, I don't think this character is going to have any granted attacks in that in that way. Because it's just the way that the character's kind of been designed. Like, the new the new reworking of the kind of interaction rules with the spirits. Like, spirits are not allies of you. So, even if you could grant attacks, unless it was to, like, I don't know... You, the other mercenaries, right? You mean, oh, you mean granted to you. Yes, fair enough. Yes. So like if you had like a sun keeper or something. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, no, it has to be within your turn. Which I think is fine. Like that's doable. That's what you want. Obviously, the thing is that you remove a damage token from it. So obviously you could spawn this in and because it's a top action, you're probably not killing anything. I mean, I guess you could do your move to an attack, right? Um, you do have bottom attacks, but in theory, you're probably not going to be killing anything. So it's going to, on on its turn, it's going to have an, on at the end of your turn, it's going to have a turn. It's going to do its thing. It's going to take one damage. So on your next turn, you're going to need to kill something. Otherwise, it's going to die. 
But if it does die, it's not really the end of the world because it could come back again. And like people said, you could play the bottom of the... Uh, what was it? The buff. Which would be a really fun thing to do. Really, really fun thing to do, actually. You just have to... Like, it's going to be interesting because you're going to want to kill enemies, but you're not going to want to kill them, like, too quick. Like, like I don't want to kill two enemies in a turn. I don't want to kill, like, one enemy a turn. It's going to it's gonna make you want to pace your kills. Just every round I kill something. That's fine. Um, so, the 91 initiative. I mean, it's very, very late. So, great for going late. Move three, curse... Target one enemy within range one of one spirit. Also pretty value. Ooh, I like this card. I think that the top is the top is obviously weaker than um than the bone archers though, so But it could stay around for a few more rounds. But in theory, because the bone archers are target too. You know, from two rounds of play, they're getting four attacks off. Whereas this, you know, I mean, how many are we really going to get off? Are we going to, could it be out for a very long time and we get like four or five? I think that would be pretty crazy, I think. If you if you could keep this out for like four or five rounds, that's pretty nuts. And what's more realistic is that you hope to keep it out for maybe three rounds. And then it's like three attacks, and then it's gone. So I don't think it's as good as the Bone Archer. It also creates an element that we're not using so far. But maybe that will have some synergy with some other characters. That's an interesting one. I, I, I like this card a lot, actually. I do really like this card. Right. On to the next one. Time to check the perks. We'll do the perks at the end of the X's before we go into level 2. Um, Spawn Leeching Phantasm. So two health. Move two, attack two. You may force the target of the attack to perform move two with you controlling the ability. If the move ability was performed, the target gains stun. Hey, okay, ice again. Oh, burn. This. It's two stuns. It's two stuns. And two attack twos. Now this might be one you'd consider extending. <laughs> for one more round. Stun is considerably better than immobilize. This is better than the, uh, the other spirit. For sure. But the ignoring shield could come in clutch in certain situations, but... Uh, this one is probably going to be better on most days. And to force move twos. Yeah, you could move them into a trap, maybe. Yeah, this one's considerably better than the other one. Except for against certain enemies. Make that kind of clear. But... I mean, stun. Two rounds of stun, maybe three if you were to use the other burn interesting it's definitely a high price but stun probably should be a high price nowadays so i feel like it's deserved you know move two could set up for a curse bomb yeah i suppose it could with the other burn we're gonna go burn crazy yeah, it could do. Only being moved two does make this a little bit more limiting. But it should be too much of a problem. You could probably grant it a little bit of movement as well, right? Also, this is going to be good on 16 initiative. You know, you're probably going to be able to burn this top on 16 initiative. And hopefully that'll be early enough to deal with what you need to deal with. So... Hmm. It's always a difficult one to evaluate this because 
It stuns going through that transition of being way too prevalent in normal Gloomhaven. So our expectation of like how much a stun costs really needs to be adjusted. And I feel like this is like the new, this is like the new direction. And this is kind of like what will probably end up being mostly the kinds of things you'll see with stun. This might not, might actually be too good um, compared to some other stuns. You don't know, but yeah, this feels, this feels like in like the ecosystem of Crimson Scales and with um, you know, Frosthaven and just the general design philosophy going forward. This feels like a card that's much more in that style vein, right? Do as you do, burn every burnable card within the first five rounds. So why are you losing at standard difficulty? <laughs> ah, just bad flips. It's got to be, right? Can't possibly be bad play. Just unlucky. It's just unlucky. Um, move three, force one enemy occupying the same hex as the spirit before move one. With you controlling the ability, moving the spirit with the enemy. Force one enemy occupying the same hex as the spirit before move one. Again, another way to set up that, that big bomb, maybe? Seems like there's a, a lot of ways to do that. Got a lot of flexibility to set up the big, uh... Uh, two damage bomb thing. Midnight feast. It's actually a surprising number of of ways to set this up. Quite flexible, actually. It's not like we only have one card, but we have like multiple cards that could kind of, in theory, get things going along the right way. Again, this is 16 initiative and it's got the word move three on it. It's going to be playable. It's going to be used. Pretty much regardless of what else is written on the card. 16 initiative, move three. I'm playing it. And I and I, don't, I think this top's probably the, the best value um, burn one that we've seen, right? It is better than this, for sure. Yeah, it's better than this. Apart from maybe the generation of this is quite useful. And of course, this could be good in certain situations a bit better but like it mm -hmm. a lot of force movement nice thing is combo with that rune more wound yeah and with the um with rupture yeah for sure there was another card the four damage single target bomb yes that one So setting this up has become easier and easier. Like, I say, when we first reviewed this card, I was like, oh, I don't know about that. But we've actually, we've got plenty of easy ways to set that up now. So, yeah, feels good. Okay. On to Unholy Sacrifice. Attack 4, range 3, target 1 plus X, where X is equal to the number of active spirits. Now, this one seems pretty this one seems weak this seems weak to me yeah it seems weak because i feel like at best this is going to be at least at level one it's going to be target two it's not going to be any more than that because it can't be unless somehow you keep that guy around? I guess you could remove... I uh, No, I don't even think you could do that. It's The best it's going to be is target two. So eight, you know, basically eight damage or, you know, attack four across two things. So eight. Range three is usable. Makes it a little bit more flexible, but... I don't know. It seems like a big investment to me. Needs confidence ritual. Oh, yeah, I suppose. That's true. Then it would be 10. Plus advantage. If you time it right, getting attack 5 advantage, target 3. Maybe 4 in theory at higher levels. I I'm not quite sure how you get 3, though. 
Pick three. Uh, I mean, at level one, at least. It just feels like it's... I know that you get stuff like this, which could... Sorry. Stuff like this, which could, in theory, be around for a little bit longer. And, of course, you can always move... You know, remove um, a wound. But I don't know. It just feels like it's... Maybe it's a card that improves with levels, right? Yeah, it removes one damage token, but then you'd have to, so you'd have to like, so you'd play one, The so it would go like, first turn, play one spirit. Second turn, that spirit's gonna go down to one health. You would play another spirit, remove the damage from the previous spirit. So now they're both on two. They both go down to one. Then you play Unholy Sacrifice on this. Which means essentially you're burning you're burning two cards. I mean it's a it's a big it's a big attack, to be fair. I see it, but I just I don't know. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's just too too all in for me <laughs> to, to to play that to play that way. I don't know. And of course, if you could get that, then it's very it's very good then. You're talking about like 15 damage with, you know, attack five across three things with advantage. It's good. Very good. Mm. It's like 18 damage and you like big burns. Yeah, I do, but it's... I don't know, it's like... It's two... It's two cards. But basically burned for one thing. It is a, it's a really big attack. I don't know, maybe, maybe it's good enough. I just don't like... Too many of these types of things. Especially if you have to jump through a lot of hoops. Because if the scenario just forces you... Now, this is, this is probably down to me playing deadly more than anything. Is that, you know, I, I often find myself just having to, like, react to things rather than be, like, proactive. Like, it's really nice to be like, oh, yeah, you could absolutely do that. But you'd have to have the time to do it. You know, you'd have to have three rounds of setting up. And you know, by that point, you know, if you're playing multiplayer, if your ally's not already done a bunch of damage to a load of things, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, it's just... I try and, like, clear round by round. And setting that up, like, for three rounds in a row. Uh, it's undoubtedly huge damage. But it's a lot of, like, weight in a round, you know? Like, it's a lot of just sort of... I mean, you, you do... You are doing other things. You know, you are playing your guys. You know, you are getting some value from them. So it's not like you're doing nothing on the other two turns. But it's just like a lot of like, oh, yeah, like, hey, guys, don't worry. I can kill everything in the room in three turns. Like, just don't die. And maybe it's because I play on deadly that every turn I'm literally on the brink of death. If I play a bad turn, that I am just have an aversion to this type of thing because I just don't have the time. And maybe that's just a criticism, you know, of having to play the game at that level anyway or playing that game at that level. Like fun things like this kind of get thrown to the wayside because you just can't afford them because otherwise you'll be dead by the time you get to do it right um like that's you know and that's a legitimate that's like a legitimate criticism of playing the game on increased difficulty is that a lot of the time you are forced to have to play in a in a set way of playing which is not always like, you know, in tune with what, you know, people want for the character, you know, what people can get out of the character. It's like, it's, it's the whole quartermaster argument again. Quartermaster is the most broken class in the game if you're not being attacked for eight every single turn, you know? <laughs> like, it's, yeah. <clears throat> You'll probably have to carry it for a long time to find an appropriate time to use it. Are you keeping it for several rest cycles in the hopes it'll happen? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You'd probably want to play it. Yeah, you'd probably want to play it medium to late. What, what is the bottom like? Uh, 23 initiative is pretty good, though. So I, I like that. Move three. 23. I mean, this is usable. But I have said that about a lot of bottoms for this character so far. Well, we've kind of gone like, ah, oh, well, the bottom is a move and a good initiative. So, like, we can't just have cards just because of that. Because I've already said that about a few cards. So, got to be a little bit careful. Um, the next time a spirit dies, perform pull one. Targeting one enemy within range two of the hex in which the spirit died. Pulling it towards that hex, then discard this card. Um... Uh, that seems very... That seems pretty weak. Like, it seems... Like, only pull one. Yes, you could maybe get onto traps, but... Pull is not always the best. I guess your summons can move around quite a bit. And, and to be fair, because summons don't actually... Um, because summons don't interfere with enemies, right? You know, enemies move through them. They just sort of sat there. Pull is probably going to be a lot better on them than it would be, let's say, on other characters. Like, I've always been a bigger fan of push than I have pull. Um, it's just, just easier to set up. You know, pull's always a little awkward. Plus, then if you've got an enemy with retaliate or an enemy that wasn't going to attack you, you have to pull them towards you and then they attack you. It's really annoying. But spirits, they can get around that because you can just move it to wherever would be good and it can move through everything and do its own thing. So it, it pull and push are probably pretty interchangeable. <clears throat> have I tried Helix Ring refreshing Quartermaster? I haven't, no. But I still think that if you were playing on deadly difficulty and you were being attacked by, you know, a room full of enemies, even... Being able to play Helix Ring every single turn. I still feel like you're probably going to be done in. Plus also, like... You would need to obviously keep the elements coming as well. Like, generate the elements and then get it back and do it again. Like, I don't know. It's it's the same thing. It's, it's broken, but it's a lot of, like, spinning your wheels, you know? It's a lot of people spinning their wheels. That's why you're somewhat envious of people who find plus zero to perfect difficulty. Just because some things when you don't have to worry about scaling are just satisfying, be it summons and burns, etc. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I can imagine, like, people running in and doing this and being like, oh, man, that felt epic. Like, does anyone remember that scenario where I ran into that room and I, I did, like, target four things and I did I killed everything in the room in one turn, like, with this really powerful like you know three card combination and then we use these items to do all this and it's like yeah but like for, for me like i just can't afford to do that because then it's like yeah and then they <laughs> the way my story ends is oh i did all those things but then the enemies didn't die because they have three times the amount of health they should have at the level that i am <laughs> and and uh and then they just looked at me and laughed and then just attacked me for eight <laughs> and i died <laughs> No, like that's the it's like the how my story ends. <clears throat> this character really needs to be able to enhance rupture. Are there rupture enhancement stickers in the CS add-on? Oh, that would be cool. No rupture stickers. I guess that's fine. The thing is, is that if you were to add rupture as like a condition that could be added, I think that would take away a lot of what the ruin, what's cool about the ruin more too, you know? Because then suddenly every character would have access to rupture, which then would make rupture a much more common mechanic across the game and then like everybody would be enhancing it and it would kind of like it would unbalance the game in other ways right because they can just sort of you know you can print certain effects without the worry 
of it. And then it's like, oh no, rupture now exists. So you can't do that. You know, I think it's if you if you control it to one character, then you can limit how much that could then spill over and cause you issues with other characters or other cards later down the line or something, right? To be clear, Rupture isn't real more specific. Is it not? I thought it was. Does the class in Charles of Ashes also use this Rupture? Oh, okay. Well, then maybe there should be an argument that it should be an enhancement then. There's more than one. <clears throat> Enhance the carriage spirit with rupture. It would be cool if you... Uh, I think the... You could do... Uh, I see no enhancements. That's, like, that's one thing. There's no enhancements on any of these guys. Anyway, so unholy sacrifice. Yes, top is potentially ridiculous, but maybe... For the difficulty that I play with, I couldn't play it, I don't think. Or or if I could, I would I would be resigned to probably just playing it as more of a vanilla like attack for target two type deal. Which would be okay in a pinch, but certainly wouldn't be like exciting. But yeah, you can go all in. And and I think the bottom is pretty underwhelming and maybe a bit too similar to other cards we already have. I don't know. But then you would maybe be replacing some other things. The initiative's decent, though. All right, level two. Oh, we're going to do perks first, right? Perks before level two. So let's talk about perks. So replace one minus two card with one minus one card and one plus one card. What? Replace one minus two with one minus one. Okay, so that's like saving us a point of damage. That's like a plus one. And one plus one. Interesting. So it's adding a card. It is adding more cards, but it's also focusing us a little bit more. That's like the first time I've ever seen a perk like that to do with the minus two, right? It's swingier than one plus zero. It is. Do you believe the original version of Frosthaven, when the cards had the Gloomhaven look, had the same perk on the Deathwalker? Did it? Replace one minus two with one minus one card and one plus one. It's kind of like... It sounds good. See, I'm usually a fan of keeping my decks lean and mean. So, I mean, not every character gets the option to do that, though. I guess it's fine. I mean, you don't want to draw a minus two. Drawing a minus two sucks. But you do also have a couple of attack ones and your spirits. You have a couple of attack ones on your spirits. So, you know, the difference between you drawing a minus two and a minus one with one of your spirits is the same. So, but obviously it's planning for the future, but it, you do have a, quite a lot of attack ones. So, the difference between minus two and minus one is nothing. Obviously, drawing a plus one would be nice. Replace one minus one card with one plus zero or plus two if it's spirit performing the attack card. Now, that's pretty good. That's similar to um, what was the one that we had uh, last week. I think we had a similar perk with, um, with that character. I can't remember the name of the character. It was literally a week ago. Bombard. Didn't the Bombard have something like this, which is like plus three if it was a Bombard attack? So we've seen something like this before, right? <clears throat> Replace one minus one with plus two on projectiles. Yeah, that was it. We liked it there, and I think we like it again here. If we draw it, it's a plus zero. So it's an, it's an increase in damage regardless, but it could be quite a big increase in damage if we get it. This could actually be just the flat out first perk to get. I don't know. Interesting. 
I'm sure someone worked out the maths behind it, but this one, I'm certainly much more drawn to this than I am to this right now. Much more drawn to this. Um, replace one minus one card with one plus zero card and one rolling poison. Interesting. Rolling poison and poison in general is less good for us because, of course, the... Well, I say less good. It's still good, but maybe not as good as other summoning characters because the summons would go before you. So if you personally wanted to capitalize on the poison, it wasn't quite as good. But you could have multiple spirits out. You know, they could benefit from each other. And obviously, of course, your allies could still benefit. It's a very minor, a minor thing. <clears throat> Most attacks will be by spirits. Well, not, not necessarily at level one. I think at level one, you've got, you had that top attack that was um, potentially like an attack for range two. You've got the one that was you attacking, but it was from the position of a spirit. So you've got that one. You know, if you wanted to go down that burn route, you've got that one. You've got the poison attack. So you've got, a, you've got at least three cards that are going to be you attacking, you know? So there are like, it's not like you're not attacking. But you have the dog for three attacks. Yeah, I know, but it's like it's not like you're not attacking, right? <clears throat> Minor improvement with chance to be big improvement in general feels great. I think, yeah, the, the the general move towards making perks feel better and less like I've said this before. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of solving perks with maths. I've never been a fan of that. Some people call me out on it and don't like that I don't because obviously, you know, most of my guides are all long form. We go into a lot of detail with it. But I've never been a fan of solving perks. But there's it's hard to ignore that previously a lot of perks could be solved with just probability. And, you know, there's perk calculators out there, which you can go and look at, which will say, statistically, this is the correct order to take the perks in. You know, and this is the way you should build it. And that kind of throws any kind of, like, player agency completely out of the window. Just like, no, if you're doing it in any other way than this, you are statistically doing it worse for no tangible benefit, right? And I've never been a fan of that because, like, in a game like... Gloomhaven, where it's all about player choice. It's all about just, you know, kind of enjoying the characters, mixing them up, playing with them. I've never liked that. I've never liked that there's an element of the game that can just be solved. And and I and I and I dis I really dislike that. And I say some people don't like me because I say things like that. Some people are like, well, what do you this guy's suggesting you take these perks, like just work it out. Like, yeah, but then what's the fun in that? <laughs> What's the fun in going over all these different build discussions when, you know, half of the discussion is just mathematically do it the right way? <clears throat> Less formularic perks. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And stuff like this and uh, is a really good change because it's giving you that really good feeling and validation as a player of making a good choice when it happens, right? So the first time that you flip this plus two, if it's a spirit type thing, you'll be like, oh yeah, I chose that perk and, and, I, and it drew it at the right time and it, and it will feel good. You know, it'll feel like, yes. And it's been, you know, there may still be a way to kind of math it out. I don't know. I, I guess you probably could if you knew exactly how many attacks your spirits are doing but you might have different number of spirits but all that sort of stuff right but that becomes very much like a gray area because then you're talking about so much variance of like well this player plays with two but this player plays with three and in this scenario the enemies i only managed to attack an enemy twice with a spirit but in this you know like there's a lot of gray area and a lot of opportunity for variance but you're still leaving the opportunity for a really good player feeling when you draw that thing right um Even if there is, even if there is a way of working it out, make it so much in like the gray area that 
it just like it would be pointless to try and work out or make it so like confusing <laughs> or, or difficult to work out right maybe um because you just like you just don't want it like what? Like, I don't want to be sat around a table of people playing a game and, like, being like, oh, this perk sounds interesting. And then some guy's like, oh, have you not, like, I mean, have you not worked it out? And you're like, well, I don't know. This this, this one feels really good. Like, like, I'm playing a lot of spirits. Like, this seems like a really good card to me. Like, a really good perk. And then they're like, oh, no, statistically, you should definitely get this perk. Because it's going to... Uh, on average, it's going to equate to 0 0.3 extra damage per rest cycle. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, it's just not for me. Hey, Alakabeza. Start playing Jaws of the Lion DLC in digital. You did not the fact that you start the campaign with the new characters already unlocked, though. Oh, would you prefer to have them actually unlocked? Like, you'd have to go on a quest. I think a lot of people wanted wanted that because they wanted the... They wanted it to mirror the board game experience, which is, you know, you just start with them. I actually, I actually do like that because then you can get a fairly accurate experience of playing the physical game. If you had to unlock them through personal quests, you'd probably have, you know, increased prosperity level... Oh, well, you definitely would with increasing your characters. They'd come in at higher levels because of your retirements with extra perks. So you wouldn't be starting at like ground zero. You'd be starting at a slightly further along position. And the actual scenarios were not really designed from that perspective. You know, they were designed as a journey, as a complete journey. So from start to finish, level one to level nine. So but I can, I can see that. Like in terms of like a a broader game experience like if the objective is to make gloomhaven like this all en encompassing game i could i can understand that whenever i replay the game do i go campaign or or brother do you mean guildmaster i uh, pretty much always campaign because guildmaster i've ma i've i've played guildmaster for like hundreds of hours so i i pretty much have done everything a guildmaster has to offer whereas the campaign there's always like a different party composition with a different mission. You know, it's like your journey is always a little bit different each time. <clears throat> you hate that feeling as well, Symphony. And once you know that it's there, you can't get your perks in any other way. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, rant over about perks. I like the fact that this is the perk design in general seems to have progress. And uh, I like that. Uh, replace one minus one with this rolling poison I said that before. I think that's it's pretty good. Um, it's an increase. It's a replace. And the rolling um, doesn't really add to the size of your deck, right? Because it's just going to kind of keep flipping. So it doesn't really do. Depends, obviously, on what rules you're playing with advantage, disadvantage, and stuff like that with rolling modifiers. But I presume that everybody is now playing with Frosthaven rules. So, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, replace one plus zero card with one plus one air card. Again, positive improvement. I like this kind of thing. Edging our deck in the right direction. These are all quite mathy ones though. <laughs> plus one <laughs> with one plus one. Yeah, that's the number that's going higher. Um, I think we use dark. Dark's better than, uh, I don't know actually, is it? We have, do we have more dark? We have more reliable dark generation though. Not sure which one you would go with first. I guess you just have to work it out, but. I know that we have some very reliable dark generation, like just move, but we also have like most of our, most of the actual playing of the um, spirits gave us air. So maybe that's, maybe that one's better or, or not. I don't know. Place one plus zero card with one plus one PS2 card. That's very good. It's going to scale really well into the mid to late levels against a lot of enemies. So this is a good way of keeping this very relevant. Um, actually, probably better than these two. Unless, of course, you want the elements. 
of course, but in terms of raw damage potential, definitely better than these two, especially towards the late game. Have I considered using maths to work it out? Yes. Of course. The only way. <clears throat> Add three rolling PS3 cards. Yes. Um... Again, another another kind of good way to keep your living spirits, living spirits, spirits, uh, relevant. Maybe towards the late game, at least your earlier level one ones. We'll we'll have to see. Like as we level up, perhaps there becomes some obvious. Oh, we swap this spirit for this spirit, and you know perhaps there's some obvious improvement there. Um, but if we don't get baked in pierce or higher attacks, then this will help keep things ticking along. Add one plus one curse. Okay. Add one flip, add target. I like the flip, add targets, but sometimes you never get to use the benefit of it because you don't have a another target you can target. So, um, but in general, when it works, it feels great. Replace one plus one card with one plus two push two card. I don't think you want this early. I think I'd be happy with just drawing a plus one most of the time. Like I said, if you, when you're starting to play the game, really, you just want to try and hopefully draw, you know, do the damage that's listed on the card. That's what I would love to do. Um, anything extra is a bonus, especially early on. But then that changes a little bit as you level up. So this would probably be a later perk than an earlier perk. Um, ignore negative scenario effects and remove one plus zero. This would probably be worth it. Um don't know what the crimson scales negative scenario effects are like but if they are in a similar ratio to regular gloomhaven as we said before similar ratio to regular gloomhaven you know similar kind of um detriment then yeah gonna be worth it and you actually get a bonus i like these ones where they've been adding a little a little bonus on the end there just to kind of keep things a little bit more valuable i like that I dislike it when it's just this and nothing else. Because then it feels like a very like, well, I should probably get it, but I don't get anything extra. I like it when they add a, a little a little bit of extra to them. Add target, probably not as good here with a bunch of smaller attacks. Yeah, that's true. That's why you only flip it when you're doing the burn attack for <laughs> easy. Yeah, of course. Hmm. You know you aren't getting it because it's boring as hell if it has nothing attached. Exactly. That's exactly how I feel about it. And to be honest, that's why I didn't end up getting them much my first run through of Gloomhaven. And I was very low on that one. And it was only until I think I sort of started to make guides and I started to look a little bit more like critically at perks. And like, okay, how many scenarios does this really... Like, does this really negate? And actually, if you look at the number, it's actually pretty, it's pretty high. Like, it actually does work out quite well. But it's just, like you say, it's a, not a good feeling to take the part. So give a little bit more. <clears throat> it's like 30%-ish. Yeah, but some of the ones that you can negate are really good ones to negate, right? Like some of the some of them are like scenario winning or losing. Looking at you, decaying crypt, ruinous crypt. Some of them, especially if you play on increased difficulty. Well good. <clears throat> so you have to out then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just like when I was playing, it didn't never felt bad. Like, I didn't take the perk, and I was like, yeah, I'll just take these disadvantages. Like, it didn't really bother me. But then afterwards, looking back at it, I was like, oh, actually. Especially as I was playing, when I started playing digital and started playing things on higher difficulty and just really getting into playing it regularly. I was like, yeah, actually, it does pay off. Right, well, perks. Perks, I think, are pretty good, right? I think we're pretty happy with these perks. Nice selection of... Uh, of increased damage. I mean, there's nothing like super, super crazy here. It just seems like it's a very kind of consistent value deck. Um, we can get rid of our minus two, which is always good. 
we can get rid of, I think, all of our minus ones. Yeah. So that means that we're always going to be drawing a plus zero or better. Which you can't complain. You can't complain, right? And that's pretty crucial when you're playing with a sub with um sort of summons or other things using your attack modifier deck. Is you know, you you don't wanna have to print like a you know, three or four damage on these guys. Having something like this just means that it's gonna be a consistent thing. And you can you can then just keep the attack numbers on the actual cards themselves, like fairly like, you know, consistent. Top perk gives you a minus one. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, you're right. You do get an extra minus one back. That's true. Yeah. So you will have one minus one. Yeah, that's fair. But still good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Good perks. Happy with that. <clears throat> All right, level two. Flurry of Madness. Spawned back cloud. What is that? What does that look like? A cloud of bat. How many bats is that? How many bats is a cloud, chat? Anyone know? Uh, two health. Move two, attack one. Target all adjacent enemies. Ooh. Model. That's kind of spicy. Seems like you need to map it out. <laughs> mm. 12. Specifically 12? Okay. Just enough to attack all adjacent enemies. Oh, so it's like a flexible number. So some turns it might be like three, other turns it might be like four, might be two. And you control the move? Yeah, absolutely. And you can go on top of enemies, right? So in theory, you couldn't attack the thing that you're on top of, but you could attack everything around the thing that you're on top of. So yeah, that could in open up a few other little possibilities, right? Good with the poison top. With the AoE poison top, yeah. Poison everything and then let this guy go to town. It is only an attack one, but... I mean, I think that's pretty good. And it's over two turns as well. You're going to flip a bunch of modifiers with this, aren't you? I can see this character very comfortably getting through their modifier deck like every two to three turns, right? You're just going to flip your entire deck. In certain rooms, it's just going to happen. A swarm of tiny creatures consists of 300 non-flying creatures or 1,000 flying creatures. A swarm of diminutive creatures consists of 1,500 non-flying creatures or 5,000 flying creatures. A swarm of flying creatures consists of 10,000 creatures, whether they are flying or not. Bats are diminutives, 3.5 E, D, and D. Oh, so we're saying there's a 1,000 bats in a cloud? Is that, is that the answer? No, you're saying 5,000 because they're diminutive. So 5,000? Seems, seems fair. <laughs> seems like a fair amount of bats, sure. <laughs> no way 5,000 bats would do that much. Like, so do people like fight spawns of swarms of bats in D&D? &D? Because if the, if the dungeon master says to you, oh, you get attacked by a swarm of bats. I'll be like, all right, what's that? Like 10, well, like 15, 20 bats? Well, how many bats you got? 5,000. All right, well, we run away. <laughs> Who's fighting that? He has a cloud storage set up. He can pull out more bats as needed. <laughs> yeah, but what's his capacity? 5,000 gigabats. <laughs> maybe just maybe D&D &D and Gloomhaven don't have the same balance. I've, 
I can't see how that could be possibly be the case. This is there has this is the universal agreed amount of bats, right? <laughs> okay. Well, flurry of madness seems seems very good. Seems very good. And um I guess it would be pretty poor against enemies with shields. But then you know, you do have those rolling pierces, but you know, if you were if you were against like five enemies all with shield, it would be really bad. But maybe you might you know, if some enemies have shields, some don't. Maybe you get lucky and pull the right card on the right enemy. But for a level two card, seems seems pretty decent. Uh, move two. All spirits add muddle to all of their attacks this round. Consume air, you and all spirits instead. Like mu muddle is muddle is the weakest is the weakest effect in my opinion in the game. Like It's just you know, it's it's going to save you some some damage over time. Of course, and it's a nice thing to have, but it's I never like to just like, oh, I'm playing this because it has muddle. If you have specific cursing strategies, then it's a bit better, of course. And this character does have some curses, so possibly that increases the value of muddle here. On average, drops damage taken by one per attack. That sounds suspiciously like math, sir. Suspiciously like math. <laughs> It's a mech card. I think I think the top is fun. The bottom is so so. Mass model can save decent damage. Yeah, of course it can. <laughs> you hate seeing a small benefit move with a 4060 initiative. Yeah, that's true. That could also compound it a little bit. Because really, it's like, whatever. I think you want to play the back cloud anyway, right? I think this is, this is a solid level too. Not too crazy, but just gives you a little bit more to play with. I like it. The bottom though, yeah, I'm not, not a fan of the bottom personally, but I like the top enough that I could, I could allow it. You'd play the top always. Yeah, for sure. Top isn't bad. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Smoky Shroud, the other level two. Spawn Mantle of Darkness. Things are getting very metal now, aren't they? We've got bats. Now we've got a Mantle of Darkness. Two health, one move, two attack. Whenever you end your turn on this spirit, you are considered invisible for the round. Two rounds of invisibility. Pretty good. Feels very safe. This might be obviously better, but you like the back cloud? Or the, you think that the top of this is obviously better? I mean, visibility is super good, right? But it's whenever you end your turn. Not like anybody else. So it can't like help your allies out. I would really like it if it was just like. Like anything. If it just basically said like. If any figure occupies the same hex as Mantle of Darkness. It gains invisible. It does say for the round. As well. Which then would mean... You would have to go early? Oh, it doesn't actually work very well. Nah, it actually doesn't work as well as you'd think. Because it's invisible for the round. And you gain it. Right? So whenever you end your turn on this spirit, you are considered invisible. 
So you'd have to end your turn and then you would gain it for that round. And then so you wouldn't be invisible next round. So you don't gain invisibility. It's actually a, a lot weaker than regular invisibility, right? It's like pseudo invisibility. Yeah. And two attack twos. Yeah. Even if the spirit moves off then? Yes. Because if you ended your turn on it, you would get invisible. Then the spirit could move on. You know, it's got move one, so it could move off you and then attack something for two. You would still be invisible. And then on the next turn, at the beginning of the next round, your invisibility would drop off. So you wouldn't get the usual effect of invisibility until the end of your next turn. You would then have to move on to it again, and then you would get it again. So it's actually like, like a more balanced invisibility. Like as Nit said, like a pseudo invisibility. Like I think didn't a, a, a couple of the Crimson Scales classes have had things like this, right? The sort of invisible but for the round or you have to do this thing to to get the bonus like the bombard had like a if you end your turn adjacent one person may become invisible like it's it's like yeah it feels like invisibility is here but it's not the same invisibility or at least it's a a bit reworked <clears throat> no safe long rest yeah exactly I think that's why invisibility is mostly used for. At least I do. I use invisibility a lot for that. Long resting on doors. The, op the optimal strategy. <laughs> you just can't use normal invis strats, but still nothing to scoff at. Yeah, I would agree. I think it, it's not bad. Like, it's still going to be good. But in order for you to use the invisibility in a most likely in a good way you're gonna need to go early so you won't use the 81 initiative on this card you'd probably want to go pair it with an early initiative move uh well make this guy then move on to this guy gain your invisibility this guy moves off does his attack then on the next turn you'd have to go early again because otherwise you'd be in view again right so it kind of forces you to do two early turns and not use the initiative built into the card. So it's a bit of a weird tempo invisibility too. Star Slinger had the two pseudo invis cards. Yeah, that's right. I remember now. Long rest on doors invis strat goes away in Frosthaven. Not if you block the bottom two hexes, it doesn't. You just have to block the other two hexes if it's a single door. Still possible. This requires a little bit more planning. Uh, so the bottom is move three, push one, target one adjacent enemy, consume data to make it plus two push, or make it, sorry, make it plus three push. If the target is pushed into a hex occupied by a spirit, the target suffers one damage. Meh pretty similar to the other effect that we had right we had another one that did this but it wasn't like you had to be in the same hex of spirits everything in in this hex containing a spirit would take one damage i'm taking bat chat i'm all about the bat i'm all about that bat i am all about that bat This would be good when you're being crowded or forced into the enemy. Otherwise, you'd want to move away from the enemies. Mm -hmm. Did the Falcon break? Why did the Falcon not play? Falcon, come back. He's there. Falcon's broken. There he 
There he is. I don't know what's going on there. When is the Falcon not broken? <laughs> yeah. This is kind of true. He does seem to have more trouble than most of the others for some strange reason. But that sounds more fun. Shard sounds like it might be slightly better. Um, I guess it's it's going to... I think this is um quite a good level up choice between these two, actually. Because a lot of it's going to come down to like personal play style and preferences. Like for me, as someone who just likes to do a lot of damage, you know, even though this is quite limited because of the attack one, I've you know, done a good job of tailoring this in a little bit this still kind of is the type of card that i would like and i, I will definitely go after and, and want to play whereas this i think if you're very methodical and maybe if you're playing two player with another character that has invisibility um you know you might find this to be a little bit better you might find that actually this kind of and this is still you know Two attack twos. It's, it, even if even if you don't really get the max invisibility out of it, like you don't really get some some kind of cool use of the invisible, you're still creating dark, gaining one XP, and getting two attack twos. You know, over two turns. So again, one attack two over two turns. Two attack twos over two turns. So yeah. But I, but I, I just feel like this card is just like oh, like if we get any way to buff this at any point sold you know so that's what you gotta uh that's what you gotta look out for back cloud gets quite strong and level up well let's let's see i mean my initial inclination is is to go for the kind of uncapped uncapped damage potential if something says attack all i'm in because there's usually some way of breaking that at some point <laughs> like okay the only difference being here is the because it's not us doing the attack, you can't break it with items. So you're just like, yeah, great. Give me all of the broken items. Uh, decaying daggers. Attack two, range three, target two. Add plus one attack if the target is within range one of a spirit. Okay. Well, that seems pretty decent value. Really decent value, actually. And hey, forked beam. Was playable. Forked beam. Although not necessarily glamorous, very playable card. And this is potentially better than Forked Beam. Potentially better than Forked Beam. Attack 3, range 3, target 2. Nice, yeah. Enhancement possibilities as well, maybe? Spirit is your target spotter, yeah. I think this is very... Like, this is just value town, you know? I'd probably play it for just the, the attack to target to range three and be relatively okay with that. You know, in a pinch, you just wanted to finish a couple of enemies off. Maybe finish one off and start on another one. Also would combo quite nicely with that, um... With the plus one attack and advantage card, right? Especially if we've got a spirit. Because then we're going to be attacking for four. Target two. With advantage. Non-burn. And you'd hope that we'd kill something. Then your reaper stays around for another turn. Ooh. Seeing the value. Now, like... This is when, like, for example, that other card. You know, this had, you know, better... Better potential, right? Like, there's uncapped potential here. But if you're looking for like, I want this effect, but I don't want to pay a burn for it. Here we go. You know, this is like the, yes, I like that, but it's just a little bit too pricey for me. Didn't like the price of admission. Couldn't quite get it to work how I wanted to. Here you go. Nice, reliable one. Or use some ranged items like a bomb or stun them. Yeah, for sure. Add on some extra damage that way as well. This actually makes me start to think that maybe we do want something like... Um, like more aggressive items that are attacking items rather than... You know, I was thinking like as we were like, you know, summoning characters generally want like defensive or like utility style items that help them kind of 
you know, stay alive or can support their their own summons or or others. So, you know, you usually look at things like, you know, invisibility cape or you might look at something like, you know, empowering talismans to get back small items because you really want stamina potions because you want to play things over and over and over again. Or you, know, you look at these kind of less kind of attack focused items, if that makes sense. But stuff like this makes me feel like, oh, actually, maybe we just want like a Hawk Helm because we can get advantage through other ways. Or maybe we just want, maybe you do want goggles because it would be better anyway. But either way, you could just start to look at stuff like that. And then maybe for your hand items, suddenly Piercing Bow looks like it could be a thing because you've got an attack one poison, you know, AOE of three. So a Piercing Bow with that, with plus one attack and advantage is also going to be really good. So... You gotta, you've definitely got some options here. And then maybe you'd consider power potions suddenly start to kind of come into frame as something you'd consider. Yeah, I think this is very, very good. I think the other card will have to be quite a lot better than this in order to like dissuade me from this because this just seems really good. 28 initiative. So, so. Okay. The next five times the spirit attacks an enemy within shield. With shield. Add pierce two to the attack. So you can get three XP and you can create air and dark through this. Through using the charges. I like the way that it's only when they attack an enemy with shield though. That's kind of nice. Because the problem with this kind of thing is it could just say... The next five times an enemy, the spirit attacks an enemy, add PS2, right? And then it may, might feel a little bit bad, but at least this will sort of just sit there and then you'll get the value when you need it rather than it just burning through charges. And, and then you're like, oh, well, it was okay. Drop that when the last room has shield, yeah. Certain scenarios, it'll be very good. This card's excellent, really, because you've got a, a very good reusable attack on the top. It's going to be good all the time. And then you've got something on the bottom here that with particular tricky enemies could be very useful too. And you're certainly a character that can support burns, so that shouldn't be a problem. It's a really good card. Really, really good card. It's a good reliable attack for a character who needs some of that. Yeah, it's pretty unconditional as well, the top. Like I said, you could play it as an attack to target to range three, and I think you'd be... You know, that'd be okay. That would be okay. It doesn't suddenly make the card bad. You know, the plus one attack obviously elevates the card, but that's not bad value at all. Yeah, this is really good. The other card's going to have to be something pretty special to, to beat this, I think. All right, spread disease. Spawn leprous wraith. That's an interesting, <laughs> that's an interesting word to use. Leprous. Uh, two health, one move, attack two with poison. If the target already has poison, add wound instead. It's kind of nice. That means if you attack the same thing, that actually works well if you just want to attack, you know, the same thing twice in a row. Because you just attack something for two, add poison. Then you would attack it for two with the poison, so it'd be three next turn. And then it would get wound as well, which is like an extra point of damage. So it kind of benefits you to try and attack the same thing twice. I mean, you've got other ways of poisoning too, right? But it actually, it as like a standalone effect on its own, it actually works really nicely. Maybe it's French, Le Prus Raff. Le Prus. Le Prus. I'm probably match, absolutely butchering that. Le Prus. <clears throat> this is like six damage. Attack two poison. Attack three wound. Wound ticks. Six damage over two turns. Yeah. You'd have to... I guess you'd probably want to go fairly early. The initiative on this card, 47, doesn't play very nicely with it, I will say. The move one is a bit... 
it's a bit obstructed. Like, you're, you're going to have to be... You're going to have to move this guy in. And also, potentially, like, if you're playing on lower player counts or if like, there's not many enemies in the room, if an enemy dies, he's just sort of sat there. You just need to make sure you play him in the right place or you play maybe one of your, your moves that allows you to move your... Your spirits as well. Maybe you might need it to move this guy a little bit more. Just in case. <clears throat> mm. Or attack two things and then black back cloud them. I think with back clouds, you probably want to hit them with the other... Your level one poison attack, right? First. Maybe not. I feel like backcloud, you just use it whenever it suits. Like, this seems like a good time to backcloud. Backcloud, <laughs> you know? You're slightly not impressed with its pseudo range 2, turn 1. Yeah, so it would be like... You have to place it next to you, and then it would move. I mean, you could play one of the moves, right? On that turn 2, because they're all bottom actions. You could play it with like. You could play it with that, right? I mean, you initiate. You could do go super late. Maybe. But you're right. I I I do I do like the fact though that this character, instead of taking like the easy route, which would be like, oh, let's just. Let's just make all these summons have like a bunch of movement. I mean, they're gonna die. Like they're gonna die in two turns. So let's just give them loads of movement. They could have done that. And instead, they're making you work for it by giving you ways to move them or making you have to go into the kind of danger to play these guys. And because they can't be targeted by enemies, they're not going to draw focus. So that could put you at risk. So then you're going to have to like run away. So I actually quite like the way that they've designed a lot of these because it means you're going to play a very active role. And you're not just going to be, yeah, here's my summons. Off they go. Like, it would have been so easy because these guys just die after two rounds to just, yeah, just give them, like, a bunch of movements so they can just get to wherever they need to be. Like, essentially making them, like, you know, like, range four or five attack twos. It's just, at least they make it so that you have to actively engage with what's going on. Except the ghost carriage, because it's cooler like that. Yeah, but that doesn't have an attack, right? That's just like for ferrying people. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I actually quite enjoy, I quite like the fact that they they they're not making it super easy for you. Like you're still gonna have to like play, you know. Um. The bottom is poison target all enemies within range one of one spirit. That's v that's a very good effect. That's the back cloud effect. Chat. There it is. Get your back cloud in. Get your poison going. Yeah, that's good. I mean, it works well with all of the summons, to be fair. But back cloud in particular is the one that's going to be, you know, forcing its way into the group of enemies. But, you know, I mean, you know, it would be quite good with just some of your other ones, too. Spotify, yeah, Spotify's died again. Um, ooh. See, this is tricky. I think you have to go Decaying Daggers, though. Like, out of these two, I think I have to go Decaying Daggers. I actually really like the other level three, though. That's a tough choice. But this is just super value. They get such good value. Yeah, it's just too it's too good to pass up, I I think. But this is actually a really good card. Man, that's tough. I said it would have to be something special to not choose this and 
kind of is. Like, it's just fun as well. That's the problem. It's probably more fun than this card. Hmm. Are we sure this card is for Flaming Skull or Squid Face? Yeah. We have some similarities, it seems. You're tempted to take this. Hmm. I'm not so Yeah, I mean, this just seems like the more fun card. It really does. You'd be happy with either? Yeah, me too. Here's the thing. I think if I was playing deadly, I would probably take decaying daggers. If I wasn't playing deadly, I'd maybe take spread disease. Because I think it's, it's really hard to pass up just something like this. Because it's just... Like, although the damage is similar to this over multiple turns, the thing is, is that this is just like... That turn quicker. Just try and kill something. Finish something off, you know? Like, that's the way you've got to be. You've got to be so clinical with your execution. It's like we said with the other cards. You just don't have that... Just don't always have that kind of time. And considering that this thing is, like, quite slow movement as well, might require a little bit more. I think I'd probably go Decaying Daggers on Deadly, but, but I think Spread Disease might be more fun. <clears throat> One level four card does a similar thing as the first level three, if that makes it easier. Huh. Let's have a look. Spirit Barrage. Attack three. Consume air. Target two. You may perform the attacks as if you were occupying a hex with a spirit. If you do add plus one attack in game one. Hey, you're right. That's pretty similar. Not a ranged attack, though. This works really well with the bats again, though. Maybe it's just all in on bats. Maybe we just get anything that synergizes well with bat cloud. <laughs> okay, this synergizes well with bat cloud. This synergizes well with bat cloud. Fine. <laughs> you know? It's any range. Yeah, but do you know what I mean? Like... They still have to be... The two targets have to be adjacent to the spirit. Which is a, a very real... Like, that is still a condition that you might not be able to fulfill. Certainly won't be able to fulfill it as easy as, as this. This feels like... Yeah, that can pretty, pretty easily happen. I mean, it's hard to tell because I haven't played the character. Who knows? Maybe this is, like, super common, actually. So, it's very... It's incredibly similar. How does Bat Cloud survive? So, um, your summons or your spirits are untargetable by enemies. So they're basically invisible. Imagine them as ghosts that are just on the board and they die every turn they take a point of damage that they're on the board. So they all kind of have two health or one health. One of them had one health. So they're only ever around for a turn or two turns. So... You don't have to worry about them in that way. They don't they don't interact with enemies in that way at all. They don't draw focus, they don't get attacked. They're ghosts. And so it's like they kind of just attack from the other side. <laughs> the ghost bats. <clears throat> But you control their actions, so it seems easy. Yeah, I mean, that's true. You do get a lot of control over that. But if, for example, you're playing, like, with the ranged um, spirits, you might not want them to be adjacent, right? Because their turn goes after you. And also, your turn... Remember, your turn goes before them. So you couldn't, you couldn't be clever here and go, okay... 
let's move them then they go because they go after you so you'd need to set it up the previous turn so you'd need to know that i'm playing spirit barrage next turn so there's a little bit more work there right yeah it's doable but there's a bit more work because you're gonna have to make sure that on the previous turn you're like yep i'm gonna play spirit barrage next turn i'm gonna consume the air let's move a guy in and the 51 initiative can't it will have to be paired with something um I mean, I guess it doesn't matter if you go early or late. I mean, it might depend a little bit because, you know, although the enemies won't react to the spirit being there, you know, other things could happen that they want to move around a bit too. So, you know, there's a little bit more limitation there, right? Like... <clears throat> Spread disease bomb plus black cloud is a lot of damage. Yeah, I think so. I think I think the plan here is just to go all in on back cloud. I mean, if we're gonna go back cloud, let's go back cloud. You know, so you just go back cloud. You go um, spread disease. I mean, whatever. We'll see what the other level four is. But at the moment, this seems to have really good synergy with that too. We would just need some way to make air, but I'm sure we can figure that out. Uh, the bottom is consume dark. One spirit performs move two. That's actually really useful. Because we know we want to move people around a little bit. Swap the positions of one spirit with any figure within range six of the spirit. That's also really nice. Just goodbye. Annoying enemy. Banish you to the back of the room or something. Well, actually, no. Sorry, the other way. You would swap. You would tr you would get you would get an enemy that's at the back of the room to the front of the room. It's probably actually that's probably what you would try and do. So if you have got like an annoying shaman or something who's hiding at the back, you would play a spirit, then swap them. Yeah, you wouldn't do it to send people away. You'd do it to bring them closer. Or swap the bat in. Oh, yeah, you could do that too. The real value is to throw allies into traps. <laughs> I it does say any figure. That's fair. I think I think swapping in the... Um, swapping in bat clouds seems very good. very easy way to get him right into the middle straight away you could do it on the turn that you played back cloud as well right just play back cloud do this done next turn poison and i guess an early initiative maybe i don't know i guess that's the only problem is that you would put swap back cloud in he gets to do his attack, but it wouldn't be poisoned for the first round of attacks, which kind of sucks. That's the problem with the two turn thing, right? Because he'll, you're probably, you're not going to get the poison. Really, you're not going to get the poison on the turn that you play it. So you're going to get one round of back cloud without poison. Feels bad. Imagine you literally can murder inferior summons via traps with your spirits. <laughs> nice. Yeah, um... I like this card. I think it's fun. Again, Bat Cloud. White Glow, Spawn Orb of Light. Two, three, two. You may forego the attack rates before a heal two range one instead. Consume air to get plus one heal one, plus one range as well. And it makes air the turn you play it. So in theory, so because they take their turn after you as well, it could immediately do a heal three range two, couldn't it? Because you create the element at the end of your turn and then it takes its turn. So the air would be there.
might actually be the kind of heal that I like. Because at least of it, because it can attack as well. You can like heal for one turn and then the next turn, like, so you can like move it in. Do a heal three to an ally. And then on the next turn, just move it and do an attack two. Extra value. I like the I like I kind of like this card as well. I mean it's not got much synergy with Backcloud, but <laughs> and and also how many spirits is too, is too many spirits with this character? I don't it's not like the bombard though where it feels like oh there's a hard limit like you don't want too many projectiles. This feels more like I mean, just play a spirit every turn. Like, that's fine. Because you're not burning cards and they're going to run around and do stuff. It doesn't feel like it would be that much of a waste. You do have, certainly you have attacks and other abilities that are strong and maybe stronger than playing a spirit every turn. But in theory, you could play a spirit every turn. You're not sure if you feel that great about the overall value compared to other spirits, though. Two attack twos, two heal, two or fours, or attack two heal, two three over two turns. It's it's just versatile. It's just versatile. Yeah, I, I just get what you mean, though. Like it's not, it's not um, like it's it's not like this kind of thing. It's not even close. Um, 77 initiative. Late-ish. Uh, spawn shifting discs. Two health. Two movement. No attack. Once during each player's turn, they may swap positions with this spirit. Well, once during each character's turn. So other mercenaries can do this too? That's kind of wild. I don't This is like a, such a really hard effect to evaluate. <laughs> I don't know about this one. Everyone can swap in sequence. Yeah, it's kind of like... It's such a hard ability to rank or rate because... I'm sure it will be useful, but... It's only in moving two, so... It is a bottom, though. So, what could be worth it here is that if you are trying to get... Those big bonuses, right? Of having more than one spirit on the go. This is the first time we've seen a spirit on the bottom. So this could, in theory, give you the double spirit turn. Which would then mean on the next turn, you'd have two spirits up. So, is there value in just having a bottom spirit action? Is also, I think, worth maybe thinking about. Like, is there some value in the fact that... This allows us to, like, first turn of the game, two spirits. Even though this spirit's not particularly exciting, it's two spirits. And then we've got potentially a lot of bonuses that we can get because of that, right? So, like, although the, the abilities are, like, a bit hard to judge, is that worth something? can do an attack five range two exactly on the next turn right this or you could just immediately do that as well if you wanted to right you could just spawn the discs and then just immediately go for the um like like imagine if you were in a in a position i don't know where the board was but if you just you, you could in theory just immediately start to get value. Like from something like this. Because it's just a one turn combo. Right, 
<laughs> the big question, how valuable are spirit bombs? This is the real... We're getting to the real... Get into the real grit. The real detail here. It's interesting. Obviously, it doesn't. It it feels very unglamorous. This this shifting disc, but I tell you what, it could do too. Like if you're playing on someone like a red guard, and they just wanted like I want to shield spikes. And I want to, like, you know, double shield on the first turn. If you sequence this in a way, you could give somebody like that a really powerful first turn of the game. Because you could just let them, like, you could just move this for two. And then just swap. The red guard could swap on top of it. So it could give, like, some characters some really good explosive starts as well. Same with like def his defensive stance at the bottom. Or is it top? It's the bottom. So like could give you first turn defensive stance, move you into range. It does make the attack for loss very nice if you're in position to use it. Yeah, that one too. That becomes super easy to land then. I mean, this is a reusable... This is a reusable attack 6, you know. With... A little bit of setup, but no, you know, we can we can work around that. But I, I, I think it, it... I think it would be very easy to just disregard this card. But actually, this is actually the secret power level of this of this card and probably a lot of like if you were just to look at the two cards you'd be like i mean obviously this card but i feel like if you're trying to achieve certain things this is better <laughs> we're all in on the back cloud that's true and this is the all, this is the back cloud card but if we weren't all in on back cloud and perhaps we... So, like, on the flip side, I know we said, oh, let's take this because we had a similar card at level four. But what if we took this at level three so then we didn't have to take this and then we could have taken this? Oh, the possibilities are endless. I'm liking the fact that already I'm seeing, like... I like... I like... All in on back cloud, but I also like the fact that there's some other cards here that could give us some nice flexibility to play in a different way. And actually get some super good value out of some some of our cards. So so far, so good. If you're trying to achieve not having a good attack, then yes, the double spawn card is the choice. Come on. Okay. Soul Harvest. All spirits gain advantage on all of their attacks this round. Oh. Oh, no. Is this the perfect initiative as well? I think it is. Remove one damage token from what... It is. Oh, no. Oh, that's not even a downside. That's not even a downside. Yeah, <laughs> boy. A little bit spicy. Hey, hang on. So this only happens if we consume the ice, right? <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage. It, it kind of is, Phil. Yeah. And the advantage will filter the curse out anyway. Yes, exactly. That's why it's such a non-issue I mean back cloud will cycle your entire deck <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage back cloud will absolutely cycle your entire deck over two rounds so yeah I mean we wanted a low initiative as well to try and get it off 
and we got it. 15 initiative. Poison all enemies. Gain advantage. Do your best, Backcloud. <laughs> Do your best. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, the bottom has some text written on it as well. Move four, heal one. Plus X, range two. Where X is equal to the number of spirits. Move through with this move ability. To be fair, that's actually an excellent ability as well. Little and often. I'll just take a move four, heal one and remove my poison that I've got on me, probably. I'm good, thanks. Yeah, this is... This is really good. Also, the plus one, minus one perk becomes more valuable with advantage. Yep. Can we heal normally our spirits? No, so... Uh, no, so yeah, this is, this is quite rare. Because this is basically giving them an extra turn on the board. So that's like really good value. So essentially what this is doing is it's giving... Well, it's giving back... It's giving back cloud an advantage attack. Which is going to be great because it's going to be attacking a bunch of stuff. Then it's going to actually remove one of the damage tokens on it. That it would have had from the previous round. So you're getting another round of, of attacks from it. This is the kind of card... That I would be like stamina potioning like back like mad. Because it's like, gimme. The only problem is that it's a round based effect. So you couldn't. You'd play it and have to be in your active area. So you couldn't like stamina potion it back that round. Bit awkward. But. Yeah, it's, this is like you slam this a bunch of times. Mm. Do we even need to look at the other cards? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. I mean, we will though, right? We will though. Just because. Spiritual energy. Spawn imbued monolith. Two health, no move, no attack, no range. All allies within range one add plus one attack to all of their attacks. I mean, it's, it's actually a pretty nice little buff maybe a little bit weak for level five though maybe a little bit weak for level five i don't know maybe not it's two rounds like a lot of these kind of buffs they only last for a round and then they're gone So two rounds of it the no move though does make it a little bit you know you can move it with your other cards but <clears throat> spirits are not an ally to other spirits yeah that's also true so this only benefits like so spirits spirits consider you to be an ally and consider your team to be allies but your team does not consider spirits to be allies. And spirits do not consider other spirits to be allies. So spirits themselves cannot be allies. But everything else can be allies of the spirit. How does this help the back cloud? I mean, it gives the back cloud an extra plus one attack. Come on. I mean, it doesn't because back cloud needs to be in the middle and this is only range one. If this was range two, there could be some some back cloud synergies. But range one, like if back cloud is right in the middle, it ain't helping. Bit of a shame. <laughs> oh yeah and also because they're not allies of each other that too literally the thing we were just talking about that too but if we were trying to stretch all right even then yeah it's true literally the rule that we were just talking about applies but 
<laughs> Black Cloud is not a meme, it's the truth. Exactly. Black Cloud's not a meme. Now I'm having to think about ways that I can come up with some kind of Black Cloud freaking channel reward. I have no clue. If I Google Black Cloud, I don't know what I'm going to get. Could be anything. Could be anything. Only if it has 5,000 bats in it. Yep. Otherwise, not accurate. 5,000 bats. Just actually, to be fair, I bet you that I could. Yeah, I could. I could easily find one. I've just had an idea. Yeah, I could. I could totally do one so easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there'd be. There'd definitely be one. I can already think of one. Right, I make a note somewhere. Make back cloud. So you guys thought you were going to get the Void Warden guy this week, but actually you're going to get a back cloud emote. <laughs> That's how I'm going to spend tomorrow. <laughs> um, 34 initiative, disarm, self, and one adjacent enemy. <laughs> Thank you for the one bit, <laughs> Lucky Loot Dog. Appreciate it. <clears throat> this is a pretty bad level five card. I mean, the disarm, the fact that you get. I mean, yeah, there's. The fact that there are loads of characters that get this kind of thing, but they get to do the move two first. Yeah. I mean, I guess we could be riding our ghost taxi. But still. Yeah, it still feels pretty bad. Move two. If you end this movement in a hex occupied by a spirit, remove one negative condition from self. Board game 613 oh. gifted a tier one sub T Nits. They hey. have given two gift subs in the channel. BG613. Lurkin. I appreciate it, man. Hope you're doing well. Congratulations, Nits. Is he paying you is he paying you in subs to my channel? <laughs> is that what's happening? I appreciate it, BG. <laughs> Please keep playtesting my game. <laughs> I'm joking. You'd have the bot try to pronounce user handles. Disarm self on one adjacent enemy. Move to if you end this movement in a hex occupied by a spirit, remove one negative condition from self. It's just bad, isn't it? Well, you could remove the disarm. It's an interesting way to use disarm, isn't it? Because, like, you can essentially remove the disarm that turn, but you had to have started next to the enemy. I mean, I... I the thing is, is that if... If... If this card was made more like a normal card, it which was kind of like with the normal power level of what maybe you'd expect at level five. It would just be move to disarm. That would be it, probably. And a lot of people, me included, would look at the card and go, it's got the disarm word written on it, guys. Um, That means we take it, but this is substantially harder to use. And the initiative does not play particularly nicely into this either. It means that we might have to play something early to really kind of get what we want. But even then, we have to start our turn next to it. So you kind of want to go late the previous turn, then early with the disarm. So... And it's not anything to do with back cloud, is it? So... <laughs> the other's better. I mean, I think Soul Harvest is just better regardless right even if you we're not i mean if for some strange reason you're not playing back cloud 
this is still the better card because a move four he'll just heal one regardless of this is just good because you're going to be able to remove poison wound from an ally just help out right and it's 15 initiative too which is one of our earliest initiatives i think i think we've had like a 12 i think we've had any better than that though so this is going to be one of our earliest initiatives <laughs> Some of these names are very clearly showing the Diablo influence on this class. I like, think it's got very like morbid at one point. But then there isn't like a is there a spirit caller class? I mean the necromancer is more like bones and bone explosions. Like the necromancer in Diablo is kind of like just like a regular necromancer, right? Now it's time for better back cloud. Do we need it? We need another one. <clears throat> oh my god! This spirit has the same stats and effects as one other active spirit. It adds plus two attack to all its attacks. Plus two move. What? No way! That's broken. That's actually insane. Double back cloud. Oh, Jesus. Double back cloud. Only one HP. It doesn't matter. You only need it for one turn. It's attacking everything for three. It's attacking all of the things for three. And because of its plus two move, it's going to move. I mean, what was back cloud's movement? Was it like two or three or something? It's moving four. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, it does stop you from doing... Well, actually, no, it doesn't. Because you just keep Bat Cloud out forever. Because then you Soul Harvest. So you play Bat Cloud. Bat Cloud goes and does its first attack, right? Then next turn, you play Soul Harvest. So give it advantage. And you remove one damage. So it's back up to two. This attack goes down to one health. The next turn, you play Fierce Loyalty. Copy back cloud. Then you back cloud attacks and this attacks. And, oh, hang on. Oh, no, no, no. That doesn't work, though. No, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Because do they get... Do we get to choose the order they go in? This one goes first. Why? Does it say that on the card? Did I miss that? Oh, yeah, literally a line of text at the end. Learn to read the card, MQ. Come on. I was going to say, I was like, this is now useless. <laughs> I was like, hang on a minute. That doesn't work. <laughs> Good. Does not upset the back cloud synergy and strategies. It's all fine. It's all good. We can depend on this to work. Like it. Well, I mean, there can't be anything better than this, right? Move four. Move one spirit into the hex you occupy. If you do, and this spirit dies while occupying the same hex as you this round, gain shield two. I mean, move. I mean, this is kind of okay too, to be honest. Just move four, potentially shield two. Although I do think, like you know, you're level six now. Shielding two isn't as good as it would as would have been early on in the game, you know. But it might save you some damage from something like a an attack two or like a target two or an AOE effect or something. Yeah, 
You feel like the mimic could have been a loss? Nah. Only if you copy Backcloud. Actually, to be fair, if you copy, like, the Hound, it's not bad either. Because the Hound has move... Oh, my God. The Hound. Wasn't that move free? Where are you, Hound? So that would be move five. Move five, attack four. It's pretty good with that as well. Oh, that's only got one health though. Ignore me. That ain't happening. Why did they not let you copy the helm, but they let you copy back loud? <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. What would be truly broken is if you copy the hound. Damn. That one only works with the Ring of Brutality. Yeah, I guess with an item you could get it to work, right? Play two tops in a turn. Yeah. Need some way to play two tops. Oh. Still just crazy. All right, what's the other level six? Come on. Spawn Soul Snatcher. Three health, two move, attack two, range three. Curse Pierce two. Whenever this spirit kills an enemy, perform Bless Cell. First one with three health. Every other one's had two health up to now, right? This is pretty decent. I mean, it's going to be... You know, three attacks of two, each one with curse. So, at a bare minimum, it's three curses in the deck. You got the PS2 to... So Keep, keep the damage numbers relevant. You might get a bless in there as well on yourself. Oh, the bless is really that good on this character though when you're attacking for like one and two most of the time. I guess so. A bit better than the plus one. And back cloud is the choice. Back cloud two is better. Three up is really good, but it's not a soul snatching back cloud. <laughs> Oh, God. What have we created? What have we created? It would be a good candidate for that one where you can keep it alive, right? The one where if it's alive, you get plus one attack and advantage. Maybe you could one for that. That's three rounds of it. Do you know what's better than three attack two? It's six attack threes. <laughs> well, when you put it like that. Uh, the bottom is attack three, range four, pull three, curse. I mean, this is super value, to be fair. Boring, but super value. Hmm. This character should be number one. Now what? Am I like list of favorite characters just because of back clouds? <laughs> I mean, it does feel like while well, everybody else, like this feels like the kind of character that if you're playing multiplayer and like everyone around the table is like, oh yeah, we've got this. Um, okay, um, you open the door on your turn and I'm going to play my move uh, two and shield and and um, I'm going to go to this hex and um, then this enemy's going to focus on me. And they're like, okay, and um, right, so, um, so so what are you doing, Spirit Caller? Back cloud. A what? Back cloud. What? Every t Back cloud. Okay. So just let us know when you're not doing back cloud. I will never not be doing back cloud. Okay. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> why are you short resting again? Back cloud, exactly. I don't have back cloud or back cloud too. That's like when people are like, okay, guys, we've got one major stamina potion, okay? 
There's only one major stamina potion. I think we should think really carefully about who should buy it. <laughs> you just immediately buy it. Why'd you buy that? So I could back cloud and back cloud too. <laughs> Double back clouds. I mean, come on. It's not going to get any better than that. I don't care what any of you can say. There's no nothing that you can say that would be better than that. And then it's like, okay, well, we unlocked a star earring. I'm getting that. <laughs> Why? Every single way that you can recur it in any possible way. Oh, no. Honestly, though, level six is stacked. I think that this is a... This is, like, a very, very good card. Like, it is. This is the kind of thing that you've been looking for, like, in incremental advantage through these guys. You know, if you've been looking to, like, just improve on your spirits as you level up, and as the game kind of progresses, you just want to get stronger and stronger spirits. I mean, this is a very strong spirit. And it's got a little bit more health as well, so you can try and keep it around a little bit more with all of the stuff. To be honest, depending on what level seven's looking like, you might want to take both cards. And also, if you've already taken, you know, Soul Harvest as well. I mean, Soul Harvest on this guy, you know, keeping him around a little bit longer, not bad at all either. It is a burn though. Yeah, but it's a burn that you can control, right? That's the thing, because you have ways of extending it. Unlike a normal burn where it's like, oh, it's a burn and it's kind of gone. This thing, because it never gets attacked, as long as you can find ways to keep removing damage, to keep it around. And I don't know what's coming up. Maybe we'll get some broken level nine, which is just like, ah, remove all damage from a, from a, from a spirit, you know? That would be really good on something like this. We'll see. With a really strong bottom ability. I mean, yeah, I, I don't like I'm not a like this is very vanilla. So I'm not like excited about it. But yeah, this is obviously very, very good. Rise from ashes. Level seven. Spawn glowing egg. Okay, we got a phoenix. Three health. On death, spawn spectral phoenix. One health, so it's only going to be around for one round. Move four, attack three. On death, wound, target all figures within range one, create fire. Oh, what? Uh, it's like a worse back cloud. And it's not even good. It's... Oh, man. Not quite a good top. Yeah, like, it, it got me all excited for a minute. I was like, this sounds good. Like, oh, man, we're gonna have to wait three turns for this? Okay. Okay. Oh. It's just a move four, attack three with a wound trigger? Oh. Like, thematically, really cool. Like, this is probably one of the most thematic cards I've seen so far. Like, I mean, it, it is, if you want, you wanted to make a Phoenix card, you've made it, you know? That is it. You've done it. Mission achieved. Really good. But, oh, this, this is just not good enough, I don't think. <laughs> Pat Phoenix, put Bat. Everyone's going for the Bat. It's for keeping a spirit on the field for four turns. You only want this if you're doing spirit stacking. That's a fair point. So, you know, if you just want... Yeah, that's fair. Like, if you're trying to just get lots and lots of spirits on the board. Yeah, I mean, that's that's reasonable. That's four turns. So, you know, if you are playing some of the big attacks. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair comment. Not this one. What's the one? The big one with the attack. Yeah, the, the X card. The X card. I 
I just kind of wish it was... i tell you what I would have liked. I would have liked... If on if if this thing here said like like I don't know create create a fire here or something and then actually it goes back to this so it's a it's a spirit that is perpetually always on the board but it's either in its egg form or its phoenix form and maybe it is only phoenix for one turn. But then it goes back to being an egg. Because this, like, the whole idea of the phoenix, isn't it? Is, like, you rise from the ashes, you explode, and then it comes back again, right? Like, the rebirth. Like, it's a cycle. And, like, if you're looking at, like... I mean, when I think of phoenixes in games in particular, I look at all the phoenixes in Magic the Gathering, right? Like, Ch um, Ch is it Chandra's phoenix? Which is, like, you know, 2-2 two -two flying with haste can come can come back from the graveyard like they do different versions like you play so many sorceries or whatever it comes back or instance or you know it, it gets triggered back with, by different means but that's the thing for me it needs to come back i know you can play it again but i feel like if you could keep it perpetually on the board that would be really cool A phoenix should be OP. I mean, it doesn't need to be, like, OP, but it just needs to be, like, around for, like, forever. Because you just can't... Like, the thing with the phoenix is, is you just can't get rid of it. Because it's, like, they're immortal, essentially. Like, you can't kill a phoenix. Like, it just can't... It can't die. Like, it'll just come back again. So, it's just a matter of time. And so I would have loved if this was a big loop. And you played this card, and that just basically meant you had a permanent plus one um, spirit. And that might be a little bit too good, I don't know. But that's just me, like, thinking out loud. There's a million phoenixes in Magic the Gare, and they are all the same, but with different triggers. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I mean, I'm usually, like... I played a lot of uh, red deck, so red deck wins, so over the years. So I've, I've got a fondness for anything with the word haste written on it. We need a nerf, but that'd be way cooler. I think so. And maybe, yeah, maybe at level 7 that's too good. But, like, if I'm designing a phoenix, in my mind, immediately it's like... It's, like, forever. Like, they just doesn't go out. And that would be a really cool way to top off that build. Because that build is, like, we want it there forever. But I can appreciate that that might be too good. So maybe... Maybe, maybe there was an earlier version of the card, and maybe it did that. And maybe that was too good. And so then it was like, no, let's just... Because it's basically like you'd get a card for free almost, but you'd have, you know, you'd kind of have to invest playing this. And I still think it'll be a bit like the Mind's Weakness, where potentially between rooms and long rests, you'd still want to discard this into your discard to recover it, to play it, to keep your stamina going. But also a lot of players could just leave it out indefinitely. <laughs> the bottom reads scary. Don't look that loud. <laughs> Kill one spirit. Attack five. Target one enemy within range one of the hex in which the spirit died. What? Oh, that's brutal, dude. Oh, no. Oh, I hate it when they do this. I hate it. You, like, just printed, like, the most fun interaction with the Phoenix on the bottom of the Phoenix card. Ugh. I get it, but... Ugh. They do... Like, why is Gloomhaven do this to every cool effect? 
They're like, ah, we'll print the thing that works really well with it on the other half. So then they can't use it together. Smart. Like, oh, just let me do it. Oh, like, how cool would it have been to be like, you have your egg and then you're like, boom, kill the egg. And then you get the attack fire, but then the phoenix comes out of the egg and then it zooms in and it attacks something. Like, how cool would that have been? You're never going to get to do it. Like, it would have been so cool. You have one item from Forgotten Circles? I don't know all the items from Forgotten Circles. Oh, it's just... Oh, man. Like, just have the phoenix out and then do it. Feels bad. I just wish, I just wish, like, stuff like this does now. It seems to happen a lot in Gloomhaven. And uh, that's okay, I guess, because th the problem that Gloomhaven is always going to have is the two cards, the only two cards when you level up. You, know, you get all of the, you know, you get that the starting hand size, so you get some starting cards, right? But the only two cards on level up, I always feel like this is always going to lead to this kind of oh, really annoying thing. You think since the egg and bird are different spirits, a level one card that adds damage wouldn't attack boost the bird? Mm. There's an item that lets spirits last longer, and that would be great with Backcloud. If there was something that gave all spirits extra health, then, well, that would work well with Backcloud, but also would work with, well, all of them, right? But possibly some of the burns, the burn ones, would start to look a little bit more attractive as well. I mean, they're already, they're already pretty decent, but there's like three burn ones we've come across, right? So, Rise from the Ashes. Oh, just... Uh, it's like a card of missed opportunities, in my opinion. I really like the idea, though. And maybe maybe this was a card that was really tricky to, to balance and get right. I don't know. You can't... You know, these characters have been playtested a lot you know figured a lot of stuff out so for all i know they've done all they've had these talks and it wasn't possible or it, or it was too good and it was like no it's going to really unbalance the game so they just played it safer and to make the game a better experience for everything else so all right let's have a look at, i hope the other level seven is a bit better because i'm not super bowled over by that Chaotic Niche, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the quest. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. All right, Spawn Vengeful Phantasm. Shamanistic Guard. Two health, one move. All allies within range one, again, retaliate two. If an enemy occupies the same hex as the spirit, when it dies, the enemy suffers two damage. There. Is this a level seven card? Bleh. Um, no. No. Now, this is just bad, I think. You feel this spirit could just be a level one? Almost. I mean, if you think at level one, we got one that didn't move, but it was like a... We got one that was like a a, a, a move. It didn't move, but it was a shield one, right? <sighs> Honestly, I feel like they could make this like three or four damage and I still wouldn't be interested. Still wouldn't be interested. Time to go back for level six? It could be because... I mean, let's have a look at the bottom because this is... This ain't good. 
Uh, heal three. Bless. Affect one character within range one of one spirit. Remove all negative conditions from the target before the heal. No. <sighs> I guess we are. I mean, that feels good though, right? This is so good. And the good thing is that we can play this and this on the same turn. We can say go and then we just do a huge attack for three range four anyway. You're really disappointed with this level. Nothing for back cloud. I don't think there's anything. I mean, I guess this is a this is a pretty good card for the um for the build where you just want a bunch of spirits. Like you just want loads of spirits. As many as possible. So if you're going down that route, this is actually a pretty good card for that. Yeah. And it's f it's four turns. So that that's good. Well, three of your turns. Attack 3 range 4 is good for summoning back cloud 2. It is good to play alongside summoning back cloud 2. It is. Yeah, so so this this is, you know, I know that this isn't like quite what I would personally want, but this is actually does play a, a fairly good role in that build. So I could see people still playing with the with the Phoenix if you wanted to go down that route. But I, I overall quite a disappointing set of level sevens, though, I will say. Um Chilling Slice, attack two, range three, add plus one attack for each spirit in the targeted area. Interesting. Okay. So spirits can occupy the same hexes as enemies because they're not like anything. So like that doesn't necessarily cut down on the number of enemy targets. It's an interesting pattern. Feels like one that's relatively easy to make like not all all of them but what i mean is it's quite flexible like you can move it like usually this is like the most common pattern you look for and then you just kind of build off in a different direction and and this builds off so you would just you know use the three and then one behind one to the side whatever you know it's definitely an odd looking pattern but i think it's pretty common like it should you should you should be able to comfortably hit four things here. Maybe attack four, target four. Yeah, I think that's probably what you're on. Which is a lot, right? That's 16 damage, non-burn. It's a lot. I think this one's... And if you're looking for attack for you to do, this is really quite good. And obviously, this is one that maybe does benefit the spirit. Kind of the all-in spirit build. This, you see, the top doesn't really do anything with back cloud because, you know, back cloud is like, when back cloud is out, we're just supporting back cloud. We're not doing any attacks ourselves on the top. We're just giving him, giving him advantage. Making back cloud two. We're not doing anything like super crazy, right? This is a great back cloud card. Look at the bottom. Okay. Move three. Poison. Target all adjacent enemies. Consume dark. Stun. Target one adjacent enemy. What? We would want to... Or you want to... Do we want to be inside the back cloud? Is that the new plan? So we're going to be inside the back cloud. Is that the new plan? <laughs> Seems excessive. But sure. We could do that. Hit and run. <clears throat> I suppose it's okay for the turn that we play back cloud the first turn. 66 initiative though. I can't remember what back clouds initiative was, but I think it was fairly meh, wasn't it? I don't think it was anything special. You would use the top mostly. I think the top's 
strong, but it just doesn't folk it doesn't work very well with Backcloud. That's the problem. And if you consider that we've got our 10 card um character, so we've got five turns, we're dedicating three top actions to Backcloud, which means that we only have two other top actions. So and you know this is before we rest, of course. So I mean we'd then have to get another spirit out. And then the last thing would be this. So maybe it was another spirit than this. So then this would be an attack three, maybe. So realistically, back cloud's a big investment, chat. It's like most of what we're doing. <laughs> Our late initiative, move in and poison, drop back cloud, then run away. You have to summon back cloud. Well, I guess it depends, right? Yeah, maybe. But you'd have to be careful because back cloud has to go into an empty hex. So, depending on how crowded scenarios get, like it feels like summoning back cloud could be troublesome. Like you might not always get the most ideal positioning on it because it's going to have to be summoned adjacent, you know, to you and into an empty hex. So you couldn't like move right into the middle of everybody. Like with a pair of jump boots or something, you know? <clears throat> What's it competing with? Remove damage on a spirit and advice. Yeah, so like, so basically back cloud, you know, as we know is, is great. Then essentially we'd be playing, um, on the next turn we'd play soul harvest. So it basically, Gives it advantage and lets it go again. Um, then on the next turn, we would play Mimicking Sprite, which copies Bat Cloud, but it gives it an additional plus two attack. So then it'll be attacking everything for three, all adjacents for three. It's pretty crazy. This thing and Bat Cloud will still be up as well. So that will still do an attack itself as well. Then, you know, then basically we're down to no, at that point in time, we'll be down to no spirits on the board just our hand of cards right and two more turns to play so what do we get out of those two turns we probably won't ever really be able to play the top <laughs> if the card doesn't relate to back cloud burn it to damage <laughs> okay it does have the word stun written on it as well as someone said just move three, stun. And ice is something that we do make a little bit of. Actually, I don't know if we do with back cloud build, do we? It's more of the support build. I uh, don't know how much ice we're going to have in this, in this particular build. I don't think we're going to have any ice on this build. I mean, maybe we're playing Death Eater build. Interesting one. I don't think that we're going to have that much ice on this particular build. What's the other level 8? Circle of Lifeless. Recover up to two lost cards with spawn actions and immediately play them for their spawn actions. Hmm. So... I'm usually not a huge fan of recovery abilities. Because you're basically, this is gaining you one card on the deal, right? You're burning a card to get two cards back. But getting to play them immediately as well is also you're kind of getting two free actions. But in actually, you're, you're getting two free turns in a way because both of them are tops. So you're kind of cheating the system a little bit there as well. So it's not, it's a little bit more than like two free actions. It's like almost like two free turns as well. I feel like it's a pretty big swing. That's how you play both back cloud. So if we, we burn the back clouds, <laughs> so we burn back cloud. 
and then we play these again. So we burn the, the back clouds in our long rest or whatever. So first long rest, we burn the, the mimic. Second long rest, we burn back cloud. Then we play circle of lifeless and just get the bat, bats back. Do the spawn cards have to have lost icons? No. It just says recover up to two lost cards with spawn actions. It doesn't say recover up to... You know, I think that the intent is that you would probably would go back and get one of the big boys. Like this. But... It doesn't limit you to that. Use bottom until back cloud burned on accident, then play top. Okay. Move four, chump. You may remove one damage token from one spirit moved through. If you do, gain curse. Okay. So then that means that we do have back cloud for another turn. So we could play chilling slice, but they're both level eights. Or what do we do? It's simple. We kill the bat. I mean... You do have to move through them. Shouldn't be too hard, but worth considering. You actually really like Circle of Lifeless? I, I think so. I think it's a pretty... It's a pretty spicy card. I like it. All in on back cloud. Yeah, uh, these two cards, I think it's going to be this, isn't it? I, d I don't think that this is quite... Like, this seems like it's going to be really good, but without that... If you're on this build, I think it's going to be great for you. But if you're not on this build, especially if you're all in on back cloud build, this ain't happening. Being all in on back cloud might be a terrible idea as well, chat, because we're, we're literally... <laughs> I know it sounds like blasphemy, but... You know, in theory, this could scale really nicely if we were playing a bit more of a uh, um, a balanced um, build. <laughs> we'll see. Right, level nines. Death is not defeat. There's a lot of text on this one. Okay. The next time an ally would become exhausted while having less than two cards in their hand and discard pile, they do not exhaust. Instead, they immediately recover up to four of their lost cards, gain invisible at the start of each of their turns, and is considered a spirit for the purposes of your abilities. What? Oh no. Oh no. This this raises a lot of questions. Wasn't there something like this what well giving this to Ruinmore on a Ruinmore would be insane. But yeah, he did also have a level 9 that did something similar to this. But also just playing this on your rune more. But this raises a lot of questions, chat. Like... What? <laughs> um.
I <laughs> like. I mean, it, it doesn't. It, it clearly can't work, but. <laughs> Two ruin wars? Exactly. I'm like, clearly this doesn't work, but. It raises a lot of questions. Revive your friend to kill them with the kill spirit card. Oh, genius. That is next level trolling. Yes. It just says kill one spirit as well. They don't even get any, uh, they don't even get any kind of say in the matter. <laughs> Two ruin wars. If you mimic another character, the mimic can't do anything on his turn. You already asked for the FAQ. I mean, like, it clearly could do... Yeah, it clearly wouldn't work. But, you know, you've got a dream. you got a dream. Wow. I mean... Obviously, there are some characters, you know, ruin more that we've seen already that would absolutely take huge advantage from something like this like a massive advantage but even if you were to take some like relatively basic kind of characters from like gloomhaven like you know most characters have one or two burns that are just like you know just nuts value like oh that's just wow if you combo those two things together you just get this insane turn it's like, if you can, flur you know, what's better than doing Flurry of Axes? Doing Flurry of Axes twice. It's like, there's so many, like, just cards that they don't even have to be amazingly great to be great, right? Could this work with Spellweaver? Or I guess not, since it's two cards. Well, it would work after they eat. What well, after they ether? But you couldn't revive the. You couldn't revive reviving. You couldn't get reviving ether because of this thing in it. This this is on. And that's why this is here too, because otherwise, potentially, then somebody could get you to get this card back, to then you to get their card back. Like this could be an infinite loop if this symbol wasn't here. This gives every class recoverable losses. There are balanced reasons why they don't have them now. Yeah. So, yeah, there's obviously some very, very apparent, incredibly broken things. One thing I will say, though, is that this is like... I mean, I guess them being a spirit is sort of synergistic to what we are and what we do. But it's not like... Like, this doesn't really play out our strategy much more, does it? I mean, I guess apart from the fact that they're considered a spirit, so, you know, for anything that gives us a bonus for number of spirits or, you know, get a, move a spirit, do all of this, that, can still kind of interact with this for a little while. I guess it's going to be kind of fun. It's going to be fun to be like, oh, hey, by the way, I kind of now own you <laughs> to your friend. Like, they play and they're like, hey, you can have your life back. It's like a curse or something, right? It's like making a deal with the devil. It's like, yeah, you can come back. With four cards. Like, oh, really? That's amazing. It's like, yeah, yeah. And you can be invisible. And, oh, wow. That's that's really cool. Yeah, but now I get to dictate everything that you do. <laughs> they were going to die anyway. Might as well take their body. Exactly. It's like, yeah, I now, I'm kind of your master now. When I say move, you move. Because I need you to be here to do my bidding. Actually, also, question. No, they're just considered a spirit for the purpose of my abilities, right? They're not a spirit. They're considered a spirit 
for the purposes of my abilities. Because I was going to say, like, do they get an extra turn after mine? <laughs> but I don't think so. Because it's specific. You are a spirit for the purposes of abilities. Not like you are not like a spawned spirit, right? What happens to their health? Well, like, they would just be whatever their health was on, I guess. Yeah, whatever their health would have... When they were going to exhaust whatever their health was at that point. They can get attacked then? Yeah, I think so. Because they're... It just says they gain invisible at the start of their turns. So, they're permanently invisible. And four cards, that gives you... Um, two turns. Then you can rest... Long rest for like one more turn. Then you could play. You'd have three cards. You'd play two. Then you could long rest. Then you'd have two cards. You could play. So that's like what? One, two, three. That's like four more turns. And you could comfortably long rest because you're invisible. So... Five cards. Oh, yeah, five cards, right? Because it's just if you have less than two. So you could have one card in your hand or something. Yeah, so if you time it in a good way as well. Reviving Ether allows Sparrow to recover cards after this and last way longer as a spirit. Yeah, so I guess what you'd have what you'd have to do is you'd have to well, I guess in an ideal world you'd have reviving ether as the last card. Like you would just die, right? With reviving ether in hand, and then this happens. And then you can just refresh, and then you're just a spirit. Play it on the reviving ether turn. Yeah, basically. Yeah, actually, that's pretty pretty broken with a Spellweaver, actually, isn't it? Yeah, that's really strong. Really, really strong. Not that probably people are going to really play these two characters together much, I would think. Because a lot of people are going to play Crimson Scales characters with other Crimson Scales characters, right? And... Maybe after that's done, there might be a bit of mix and match. But, um, you know, you're going to get to this point. I think where there's going to be so many characters in the game that, you know, one or two little broken combos here or there, as long as they're not, you know, directly positioned next to each other, like as starting characters, so that, you know, it will be exploited often. I think that's okay. We should try it sometime. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a good idea. You and all spirits perform move four. You and all allies instead. That's pretty good as well. Move four and everything. I mean, that's a really good ability too. What's this other level nine going to be? Spawn, wandering soul, eternal endurance. Three move, no attack, no health. Okay. Okay. Consume air, heal two, range one. Consume dark, one enemy within range one suffers one damage. The spirit cannot gain damage tokens. Four XP, I mean, kind of irrelevant, but sure, for, I guess, battle goals, but still. Wow, you wanted a permanent spirit? Here's a permanent spirit. A permanent spirit that just... Kind of walks around and just... Actually, this is pretty good. It's actually pretty good. You know, you have some excess elements kicking around. Yeah, sure. Here you go. Here's a quick heal. And it's got move three, so it could just move towards people. Like, here you go. I'll move towards you and heal you. And then... I mean, this is... Fine. 
over the course of a scenario, you could probably expect to get... If you play this early on and you just let it kind of do its thing and you just use elements as and when you see fit, you'd probably end up doing like... Like six, seven damage with this. Maybe even more. And then load of heal. Plus. Plus just the. Um, plus just the fact that you've got a spirit on the board. And you could use that level one. Is it the level one card that you gain plus one attack and advantage for it staying alive? Because it can't die. Great for the level 8 chilling slice. Yeah, but I mean, also, let's not forget about that level 1 card that was said we would gain plus 1 attack and advantage for as long as that spirit is alive. This thing cannot die. The only way this would die is if we die. Right? So, actually, it's going to be permanent plus 1 attack and, and advantage for us forever. And it's going to wander around doing healing damage and buffing up other things. This is actually really good. Permanent plus one attack. Permanent. I mean, I know we'd have to burn another card, but whatever. <laughs> We're doing it. And you could do that all in this in the first turn. Because this is sick. This is a top. And I think the other one was a bottom, right? Where are you? There you go. Boom. First turn of the game. I mean, I guess we don't do this. Is it, does this matter? Is this a cost? I don't think it is. There's no damage token to remove. I mean, surely the idea is to make this a thing, right? Surely that's the thing. Got to be. Yeah, there's no token to remove, but do we just ignore that part and still get the bonus, you know? Honestly, you think that's a weak combo, all things considered? Well, yeah, but you... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but you're also just getting, like... If you're going down that route, you're also probably playing Chilling Slice. You're probably playing... Um... Uh, bu 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 bu. We're probably playing Spirit Barrage. You're probably playing Decaying Daggers. Like, if you're just playing a value attacking build, even bring back Unholy Sacrifice for the, for the memes. I think it's not bad. Sure, maybe it's quite slow and incremental value, but it's something. Um, the bottom is Spawn Disembodied Goliath. Three health, one move to attack, push one. If any other spirit would receive a damage token, you may place a damage token on this spirit instead. Another round of back cloud, <laughs> anybody? Uh, yeah, you could get that. This could allow the Mimic to stay out another turn, huh? Well, potentially another... No, no, no. Yeah, another two turns. Because you could put this out for three. And because the Mimic always goes first, you just put the damage here. So this goes to two. Then it will go down to one on its turn. Then on the next turn, you mimic again, and this will just die. That actually makes the mimic insane, because you can keep the mimic for a total of, of two rounds. Three rounds, sorry. Three attacks. No. Yeah, one. Two attacks. Or Phoenix. Ooh. Yeah. 
Although having said that, the Phoenix is like, if you don't get the on death trigger, Phoenix is kind of a bit meh, isn't it? This is an attack four, move four, attack three. It's a bit awkward that this is the, the, the death trigger, you know? <clears throat> if the back out stands inside of me, can I attack that enemy? No. Unfortunately not. It does state that in the... Uh... Spirits cannot target enemies which occupy their hex. Regenerate ice is clutch too. Yeah, we did need a little bit of ice. I mean, I think it's got to be eternal endurance for for back cloud build. This is clearly broken with certain characters though, but like. I think this is some good level nine card design though. Some good level nine card design right here. Like, this just makes you, like, approach the game in a slightly weird way. And, like, if you find a broken combo, you're going to feel, like, so smart. <laughs> and it's going to feel, like, nuts. Because there are other characters that can recover cards too, right? Like, Circles. There's other characters who have, like, Reviving Ether style effects. It's not just exclusive to Spellweaver. And then this is actually just not pretty nice. I know it's nothing kind of crazy, but this is this is a good enabling ability. <clears throat> Tinkerer, yeah, Tinkerer can recover cards. First card, super cool thematically, but more swingy. Can be used poorly or broken. Other has two really strong, helpful spirits, but only get one side of it, really. Yeah. Also, you know, we were talking about bottom spawn actions. This is only the second one we've seen, and this guy's actually pretty usable, so... Good way of flooding the board very fast with... Uh, with spirits on six initiative as well so they can immediately have an effect you can even like turn one back cloud this then you could okay so if you do that then back cloud's gonna go in and attack so back cloud will go to one this guy will go down to two Oh, yeah, no. Or, or no, actually, you would... So instead of back cloud going down to two... And there's... there's yeah, instead of back, back cloud could then not go down to one, could stay at two. This guy goes down to two. And you've got these two with two. Then you play Mimic onto back cloud... Then Mimic comes in with one. Then this guy goes down to one. Then it falls off and then you get one more turn of Mimic. So you get two turns of Mimic. I guess if you play it on the same turn as Mimic, you could get two turns of Mimic. Right? Because then this would go to two. Mimic would be at one on the next turn. Then Mimic would take another one. So this would go to... Yeah, so... You could get two turns of Mimic, or you could get, like, a very fast start. The nice part is the Mimic's second turn, you can have advantage. Yeah, that's super good. And to be honest, this guy's going to be on one, so he's going to gain from it too. So you'll have three summons attacking. I know that he's not, like, the best at attacking, but still, right? Right? 
When was that card? Was it like five? Where is the where is it gone? Here. And you're gonna have the ice too. Oh, and you can remove the damage from it. Oh, disgusting. So you could remove the damage from the spirit. No, you can't because it's no, because it's never gonna have a damage token on it. Yeah, this is the trick. The trick is, is that it's never going to have a damage token on it. Because it's only got one health. Immediately, as soon as it would take a damage token, it would die. So, it doesn't quite work that way. But in theory, you could remove it from... You could use the ice to remove it from the golem. And from the um, the bat, uh, bat cloud. And then you could, like... I don't know, short rest or stamina potion bat mimic again. There's so many, like play mimic they <laughs> make this it feels like a really combo heavy character actually like i'm getting like like magic the gathering like play this card to play this card to get this card back to then play this card and then i can play this card back again and then i can do this to play this and then because i have this this happens like oh my god i'm getting them vibes you know oh Yes, it's good. It, you're basically playing unstable upheaval every single turn. <laughs> like, it's pretty good. I mean, it's not quite because it's not range two, but you've got two of them doing range one. So, Seems like it can get really nice results if you set it up properly and enemies clump up. Yeah, so. So lightning? Yes. Like, um. Well, that has a range 2 one as well, though, right? You can zoom the fire. That's why that one's broken. Yeah, I mean. In two player, I don't think that's a good idea. Like, in two player, I feel like it might be a bit too linear and also like in certain scenarios where maybe the enemies are a, a bit spread out or the scenario design is in a certain way like i can see like it's it's fun and if if for example we were to load into a, a level and we were like we're trying to do the most amount of damage as possible in a single like you know in a, in a few rounds or whatever right we're going for like damage totals like we're just trying to Top up the most damage we could possibly do. That feels like it would be really cool for that kind of thing. But maybe when you're just faced with like certain scenarios, it's just all going to be a bit awkward and maybe it will just be a lot of attacking for not a lot. I don't know. It's really, I mean, it feels very strong and it, it gets me excited, but I'm also wary that possibly on certain scenarios it could just fall, fall apart and be like, oh, yeah, this isn't very good. Then there'll be other scenarios where you just blitz it and the rest of your team is like, what just happened? <laughs> you really like this class? Also 10 times as much after this stream. Yeah, I mean, I this is, this is going to go straight up towards the top of one of my favorite classes, I think. I've always liked summons as just a general mechanic in games but gloomhaven has just always struggled to get them right and most of the most of the classes that we've seen so far so the artificer uh, and this and even you know the bone shaper and frosthaven i think they're all doing things right so i'm excited for the future of uh of summons and summon type things in uh, in gloomhaven because it feels like a like if you were to look at one area of the game that a lot of progress has been made, summons, in my opinion. Like, just in general. The understanding of summons and how to make them more usable and fun, I think has come a long way. <clears throat> Sadly, this class is part of no starting groups and one of its personal quests is very hard. That's not true. Both of his personal quests are hard. It, it, so this is one of the add-on ones, was it? Are 
Do you like how all cards have some synergy with each other, but there's two clear paths? Spirit spam, boss spirit. Some classes are a bit too A or B with not much synergy between the two paths. Um, well, I, I, I kind of disagree a little bit there. I actually prefer it if there's a clear A and B. Because the problem when you get like a bit of a, a middle ground where there's a lot of cards that could work in either, it generally tends to be that people just settle for what is the best value. So like if I'm not pushed into a certain decision, like this card's really good for this, but eh, it's not very good if you're not doing that. It's kind of like shield spikes, right? You kind of go in on that. You're like, you're inherently trying to get stuff with the word shield on. You're trying to build around that. You end up just taking good value stuff because it's just good value. And then what happens by doing that is you then start to dilute what you're doing. And then you're diluting, diluting. And then by the time you get to like, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, it's just let's take the card with the best attack values. Let's just take the card that's got the word stun on it. Let's take the card with the best their initiative, right? Let's toss a coin. I, I actually prefer it when the cards are very kind of like, yeah, you want this for this, but if you're not doing that, you definitely don't want this. Because otherwise, I just feel like the game kind of meanders along and then you end up getting like very samey results at the end. Um, so I actually kind of prefer it when it's like that. You don't mind going for value and breaking your theme? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with chucking the odd card in. And by having, by having like this... This character does a fairly okay job of that in some respects because, you know, if you're taking a spirit, spirits are useful for all of your cards and they're, and they're useful just within themselves. So, you know, taking like, for example, if you were to just instead of, let's say instead of taking, um, let's say instead of taking like the Mimic, you took the Soul Snatcher. That's a really great value card, right? And it works in any any build that you play. But it's just a good value um, spirit. And it's going to have good synergy with uh, with this at level 9 if you wanted to go down that route. Or even this. Because you could just keep it alive. And then the fact is as well, this guy is not a burn. Which we didn't we actually didn't mention. But this guy's not a burn. So, you know, lo getting this guy out could really extend the life of one of these really, really good ones. And in fact, you could even go all the way back to that really early level, was it like the level two? Um, no, the level it was a it was a level. Oh, it was an X card. This guy, right? And suddenly you've got you've got this guy who's running around, stunning everything every single turn, and he's staying out because you're just taking it off the other thing. So you've got like it's really cool that an X card. You know, at level one, which was, you know, fringe playable, maybe at level one, has suddenly become actually, wow, this card works so well with the level nine. I might consider going back and using this X card because I've now just got something that's going to stun something every single turn. It's going to move to and stun. I've just got not like unlimited stuns, but I mean, I've got, st I can stun something for five rounds because it's three health on that, or I guess it would be taking damage on its own turn. So not quite, but. You know, there's some really fun things. It's interesting because it's not really a summon class. It does have the bonus of not worrying how summons overperform in two and underperform in four. Yeah, I mean, it's just... the oft Often the problem of summons is that you play them and then they just sort of dither around and you kind of have to get value out of them. Like the rest of your cards suffer for the fact that you have one or two cards that are like, oh, play this summon and this summon's really strong. And if that summon dies, it's like, oh. Well, well. Back to the drawing board, you know, like you, it might really kind of screw you over. Whereas in this one, like these guys just kind of die and then they come back and they just play them naturally. It's a bit like the, the bone shaper, right? The bones are just going to keep coming back. And just kind of keep cycling things. <clears throat> now it's level nine. What two level ones and X's am I keeping?
Well, you'd be looking for stuff with good bottom actions, I guess. I mean, this could be extra damage, right? I mean, this could... Bat Cloud could really do some work with this. And the Mimic as well. Extra two damage off from those guys. You could... In theory, you could... Troll and do this. Right? Because you could put the damage token on the Mimic. But then the Golem would take the damage token from the Mimic. So then give yourself plus three. I mean, I don't know. Then you'd be attacking for what? Six? Seems fine. Probably a bit much, though. Take the ghost carriage. Ghost carriage seems fun. Also, this is pretty good. This is pretty usable. This too. And this is kind of okay, but I guess a bit underwhelming. Actually, yeah, a bit underwhelming at level nine. Maybe? Free dark? I feel like you want something that's not a move, but I don't know. Everything is move on the bottom. This character. This is a burn. You definitely don't want the loot ability. I don't know. Maybe this. Not a move, you don't understand. I don't know, just like it would have been nice to have like something that isn't necessarily move. But to be honest, this is probably the one. Because we're gonna have at certain points, we're gonna have three three spirits on the board. So this could tangibly be an extra three damage. Uh, so I'd take that. <clears throat> you think you picked the move to make dark? And the death eater for ice. Yeah, fair. The thing is that I think you'll be mostly looking at the bottom of these cards, though. Also, to be clear, you will draw a lot of attack modifiers with your spirit, so you should have dark and wind f frequently, you imagine. Yeah, it's true. They're all just going to kind of appear, aren't they? Yeah, that's fair. Cool. Well, I think in summary, then, I think we can sum up this is a pretty... Um, this is a pretty... Excellent character, I think. In terms of the way it's been thought out, in terms of its theme, its mechanics. There is something here that's a bit broken, but I like that. I like a little bit of broken jank, you know? I as long as it's not like you know completely making the game a joke. And you actually have to kind of work for it. I don't mind that. And I think this game, this does force you to do it, this character. Forces you to have to work hard. But if you do, you'll get some really, really strong results. No matter what build you go for. If you go all in on back cloud. Or if you go, you know, I'm just going to go wide. And I just want to have summons on the board every, um, every turn. I want to have spirits on the board every turn. I think that's also pretty viable. Like, you're going to get a lot of bonuses for that. Yeah, really, a really well-designed character. Two, two pretty distinct builds. Which is not easy to do. And also, not a lot of filler. Not a lot of filler. When I say filler, I classify stuff like this as filler. Like... You know, it's like, it's, it's, it, you need stuff like this to play the game, but it's not like, 
it's not like adding anything, right? It's just suddenly like, oh, wow. Not a lot of that. Everything kind of had its own thing going on. Like everything had something like to do with the spirits or like had some sort of, you know, like, there's nothing here that's like, you know, even that disarm card, you know, I said it was pretty bad, but you know, they could have just left this as move to disarm and ignored everything rest on this. And it would be like, good card. I know that's good. So I really appreciate the fact they've gone to the effort to really craft, you know, unique abilities on all of the cards. Like everything feels unique. I guess this is another one, maybe a little bit filler, but not bad. Yeah, excellent. Cool. So that was the spirit caller. Thumbs up, two thumbs up from me. Okay, so there we have it. I really, really like this class. I think we really, we may have focused in on one particular element with the back cloud thing. I think halfway through this, we just really got very, very obsessed with it. Um, but I think it's really cool. And it's nice when you get to latch onto something when you're kind of reviewing a character and go, wow, I'm really excited to play this and then combo this off with this. And you could see like both me and like everyone in chat, we were getting like excited about the prospect of being able to do that. And that's always a good sign with a class because it kind of gives you that feeling of this is going to be really fun, exciting and different to play with. So I think like summons have always been something that needed kind of addressing or changing. And I know a lot of people house rule summons and uh, Frosthaven is changing a lot of things up with summons as well, making a lot more of them replayable if they're kind of key and core to that character's um, way of playing. So there's some really interesting changes coming down the pipeline with summons. And the Spirit Caller is a really, really interesting way of looking at those in a kind of different, in a different kind of way. And uh, yeah, I, I really liked it. I thought it was a very interesting way of doing it. Character seems a lot of fun, really thematic. So it's a home run for me and one I'm definitely going to be looking forward to trying when I get my own physical copy of Crimson Scales. So that pretty much wraps up today's video, but not without saying thank you again to all of my supporters over on Patreon and those who subscribe over on Twitch. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And Mike for the legendary support. That is incredibly kind of you, dude. Thank you so much. If you would like to catch me live, come over to twitch.tv slash request every Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday. Sunday is when I do multiplayer streams with viewers, so if you want to check out doing that. Wednesday is when I do these Crimson Scale streams, and Monday is when I do the Deadly playthrough. So if you'd like to come and hang out any other one of those days, but I'm pretty much always happy to talk Gloomhaven regardless of the day, so come hang out and uh, have a good time. All right then, all that's left for me to say, as always, thank you again so much for watching. I will catch you in the next video. Bye. I think so. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh the flip. That's the flip <laughs> from <Yeah>. Jabberhead. <laughs> That's the blessing so, from uh, uh, Isaac. At this point, can we uh, get your approval to add an additional attack modifier deck uh, for allies in the digital version? <laughs>